Welcome to another episode of Zero Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today I am so excited to have on a 35 year old from Hull, England. His hockey journey has taken him to England, the USA, Australia, Denmark, and Hungary. He returns to the shed after episode 212 with Team GB Royalty, the Disney movie, folks, has been listened to 1,052 times. So maybe Disney's listened. He is Great Britain royalty because he has two bronze, three silvers, and four golds. He's been mucking it up with the squad since 2006. A staple with the Kingston Crunch, Predators, and Jets. Spread his hockey wings abroad in the AHL and East Coast. And dabbled in Hungary with Duna Javarosi. And in the Shed's honey hole, Thunder Yuski. And probably ate kangaroo in Australia. He is a legend of the EIHL and has a Challenge Cup, a KO Cup, a playoff title, and a league title. However, he is not a Matthew Myers testimonial winner. He is currently mucking it up with one of the Shed's honey holes, the Sheffield Steelers. Welcome back to the Shed, Davey Phillips. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming for your one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah, no worries. Last one was a bit busy. I get into how we know each other. Last time, um, there was like six of us, right? It was a bit hectic. <laughs> yeah, it was a little chaos, wasn't it? It's it good was. fun, though. It was fun. Every time in here is fun. <laughs> so thanks yeah. for coming. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I always get nervous when these things start. I'm not normally like that. You get nervous right <laughs> now? I just me. got real shy. <laughs> right now? Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> don't get shy with me. No. Um, So... That episode, though, I always say it should be a Disney movie. I've been watching The Mighty Ducks with my kids, right? They both got right into the series just here last couple of days. We've watched D1 and 2 and 3 kind of sucks. But um, what you guys have done is a way better story than that, you know? Yeah, it, well, it, it actually, yeah. I don't know if you could make a film, but it was, the story was good. It, um, you guys wrote a it, Disney script already. You know, they don't if even have we, to get writers. You guys already did it. If we just, if I look back from when I first started playing for Great Britain to where we, where we got to, it was like, you do pinch yourself and think like, well, that was a good journey. And, um, and yeah. that the best thing I forgot to say on the last one, it was doing it, you know, with a good chunk of them players was there since day one when I started. So to kind of, with all experience, sort of like the highs and lows with it, you know, because uh, we did have a lot of lows. There was a lot of um, tough times in lower groups and stuff. And and at the end of the day, like you're in that group for a reason because you deserve to be in there. And yeah. we weren't that good. We might have thought we was better or whatever. But do you think um, do you think it has to do with the EIHL getting better? That you guys are getting yeah, better? Yeah, people or people people say that, and it's. And uh, I can't, yeah, it's tough to put your finger on it exactly, but I do definitely think that has got uh, I think being around better players it. makes hockey players better, right? Like, definitely. In I always practice say that. every day when you're mucking yeah. it up with guys that are awesome, they make you yeah, better. Yeah, definitely. I think there's like two sides to the argument in a way. It's uh, definitely the EIHL's better and helps as well. But then the other side of the argument is, yeah, people ain't getting as. There's not as much depth getting the like minutes that you know kind of well, and that's what's interesting know. about when you guys go to the world championships is realistically there's not always yeah. that many Brits running half walls and stuff like you yeah you guys exactly. are the like some of the we've got Brits a lot of penalty I, killers well yeah the Brits I had were the <laughs> best teammates I ever had right they never complained yeah. about ice time they never complained about anything they had to do and they would go out and block shots for the boys and do anything for the boys. Um, yeah. But you're right. Like they weren't playing. There was Joey Martin out there. There was Lordo yeah. right? taking all the right wingers ice time. So what yeah, are you going to yeah. do? <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. And, uh, you know, we have got people who play power play and can play power play. And I've done it in the past. But like yeah. you say, it's not, not everyone's getting like the regular the PP time. And it's, yeah, it's one of them ones in it. Like you need to be doing it on the regular to stay sharp and, yeah, and it's that it's 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 a talent. It's a skill, right? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my thing was 
power plays. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that was what like I, I like to still. I like to still think I can play power play. I'm like I, I played power play before. Yeah, it was like 10, 15 years ago. Was it that <laughs> long ago? Because you were putting. Oh, up, yeah. When I played against you there, you were putting up like twenty five points a year. That's no power yeah, play I time. Won't, I won't, I'd kind of be. I'd maybe get like chucked on if um, you know, like someone on the top two units kind of like went down. I'd be like the last. Uh, right. Yeah. So, oh come on, yeah. Okay, well, you've had some solid offensive years for not getting much, uh, that much ice time. But like, yeah, what you guys have done, and then like for me to watch it from here when I was over there, I get to know all you guys play against you, muck it up, and then I saw you in those groups where like I'm at Eli Jenkins in Cardiff Bay writing my thesis or whatever, and I'm like, hey, do you get this weird sports channel? And he's like, actually, I do, and I could watch you guys play. But now you're, I'm in Canada and you're playing on TSN, you know? Yeah. And I didn't even realize they, I thought they just showed um, kind of like the Canada games or like the big Canada games against, you know, the other top nations. But they, yeah, they, they took every game on there, don't they? Oh, yeah. I, I would be watching them. Yep. Yeah. It's fun to watch you guys. I like watching people I know play hockey. I really yeah. not that into the NHL because I really don't know anybody. I would much rather watch an under 11 game with all my fellas around here. Or yeah. or watch you guys play, you know? Way you know better. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, moving on. How we know each other is we officially met other than mother effing each other on the ice at Matthew Myers testimonial, right? Yeah. In and the toilet. At, at, yeah, and I, I I guess I probably played against you in the finals, right? It was G B against uh the new school devils, right? Tough yeah. bounce for you guys. I'm sorry, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they say winning's fun, but um, how did that... you how did you feel chucking the equipment back on? Was that the first time in a while? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. I was a bit. Did feel weird going skates. back on? Yes, and the heart didn't really keep up. You know, yeah. <laughs> it were the heart was moving too rapidly, and uh, yeah. I was having trouble breathing when I would move around. You know. Yeah, I bet yeah. it's weird, isn't it? You you even taking a few weeks off, you feel horrendous when you I'm... get back on. Imagine six years. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then you've been hanging out in your shed for like a year and a half, right? That's Does your head still tell you that you can still do it? But well, I could like, still yeah, see the stop. plays, right? When I was on the ice, yeah. I, could, I could see the plays I should make. Like I would see Brody Reed back door, and then I just couldn't mm. execute the pass, you know? Yeah. Or you yeah, can see yeah. where you're supposed to shoot it to put it in the net, but like I couldn't actually shoot it there. <laughs> so, yeah, just the rust in that. Yeah. But, you know. Still found a way to win, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I might have had the game winner, you know? Just thinking out loud. Did you make that trophy? Yeah, with Matthew. That was funny. Uh, yeah. It was fun. We uh, good. Those were from the – that was made out of the boxes. The jerseys came in. So <laughs> the, night, the night I showed up, the jerseys had arrived that day too, and then we got chatting how we needed a trophy. So then we took the jerseys out of the boxes and made that trophy out of the boxes, the cardboard boxes, Yeah. <laughs> I was pushing out to get you an invite for his next one in Nottingham. Well, and that's the thing, right? And then Batchy's got one coming up. And I oh, honestly, yeah, 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 I, yeah. I was almost thinking, I'm like, geez, I almost hope he like doesn't ask. Cause like, I'm not sure if I could swing it again. And I would hate to yeah. say no, you know, yeah. I got to do like family trips and stuff. I can't just keep going to like the UK and yeah. have, have a, yeah. a boys weekend. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Are you fun, annual, though. Your annual testimonial trip. I can't believe uh, Matthew's having another one. That is wild. Stuff, no, it's brilliant. It? Oh, so much fun. And to get I... the boys back together is that's living. I was laughing out when I first found out, just only because it's how close they are together. But he's, he's deserved both of them, and rightly so. Oh, yeah. And I'm only, I'm only jealous because I'll never get one. Um, you're on your way, eh? <laughs> Hopefully, they don't boot you out the door in the next few years, eh? And you could get one. <laughs> Probably not in my luck. It, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll never get that far. So you've been, been there like that. seven years, right? Yeah. Four years Including was my expiration date with any club. Four years was more than enough that they were like, just get out of here. Beating yeah, high, exactly. you know, Western Michigan. Those were my four year stints. But yeah, I in pro, one year deals everywhere. And yeah, uh, yeah you know. It's good. on the other side of it, though, it's kind of nice to bounce around and experience different countries, different places, and stuff. It absolutely is, and then it sure helps start a shed too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely get to get know a to few more things people. about other places yeah. and leagues. You know, yeah. they are all different. You've bounced around for a Brit. You've been around. 
yeah, it, it did get to a point where I was like, oh, this is getting a bit tough to kind of mentally, you know, bouncing around places. Uh, well, it's, it's nice to have a home, right? Yeah, it's family, when, especially when you get older, it's nice to kind of get settled. Well, like I thought I was set in Beatingham. I thought I was there for the full go. I was like, I had set up shop and then they bring, you know, when you don't, don't have success and then they bring in a new coach, he's going to yeah. make changes. And then they're like, kindly yeah. leave. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. So it, that shit happens in hockey when you yeah. look back on it all. So the business. I'm getting sidetracked at the testimonial. We did have our great chat in Heidi's bathroom, right? Great time. Yeah. Great chat. It's been talked about, but uh, did you hit Chippy Lane afterwards? No, I don't think. Oh, yeah, I did actually. And it was, oh, my God, it was an absolute zoo down there. Wasn't and it? I was, yeah, I don't think I was actually drunk enough to be down there because I was just like, it was chaos. Yeah, chaos. And I started getting like anxiety. I was like, I need to get out of here. Nothing, nothing from my experience good happens when you're down places like this. <laughs> There's a lot of garbage and there was a lot of people having fun. Yeah. <laughs> It is chaos, though. <laughs> yeah, it's chaos. I want, I want hungry enough to be stood around down there. Is that right? I mucked it right up, went yeah, right in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so the other way we know each other then is uh, pretty much the only year I played in the UK. You were with the Belfast Giants, and we had some, we had some battles that year. Yeah. Do you remember the yeah. first exhibition game of the season? We came to Belfast. And Lordo gave us this wild speech of how you guys were the unicorns of the league. And you guys had, I guess, ran a muck the year before and won the league like early. And he was like, we have to show them we're here and blah, blah, blah. And then we went out and just had a full Donnie Brick. Everybody was fighting. Do you remember that? Yeah, I think so. Oh, that was like my I first might... game in the UK. And it was I just, think I, might have had, I think I might have had a fight that game. Well, did you have green sh- green jerseys on? Can you remember? Yeah, I think so. Like I know Jesse Mitchin fought like there's that's a, bunch... that's who I had a fight with. Yeah. Yeah. There was a bunch yeah, of fighting and guy. I was like, this is an exhibition game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying actually... to get my lungs going here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I pushed him into our goalie and then, I'd fight with him because he bumped into the goalie, but I was going to push him it. into the goalie. <laughs> well, he can't do that, right? He's got to get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was a tough kid, though. How'd yeah. it go for you, that one? All right, but I think I got a little bit of a head start. One, yeah, two. oh, yeah. Got to jump he wasn't too bad for me. That's good. Um, okay, yeah. here's another way we know each other. That is your name just came up. I had Chase Ruddy on, and I... I, you know, you heard about uh, chocolate hitting the ice in Manchester, right? That started here in the shed, just so you know. <laughs> what did? Um, when they threw chocolate on the ice in Manchester. Um, All right. Yeah, so that was me and Critch, their captain, chatted about it. I'm like, let's see if you they'll throw chocolate on the ice if you guys win against Sheffield. And then they did beat you, and they actually threw chocolate on the ice from us talking in the shed. I think that's really neat, you know? It's mad how many people buy in and actually chuck the bars on. You think maybe you expect like, you know, a handful or whatever, but there was a lot of chocolate out there. And then when you guys did Kit Kat get that in Sheffield, man, with Mosey, yeah. that was crazy. <laughs> that was hundreds. We had Kit Kats for weeks. I was like, you need to kind of like donate these to a kid's <laughs> hospital or something. Homeless people. There was loads. <laughs> and I think it's so cool that that could start from us chat in the shed. So, you yeah. know, I'm not, I had asked you, but I'm, we're not allowed to do it in Sheffield anymore. I, I, fun is banned there after Kit Kat. Get that. I guess it made a mess. Um, so I've moved on to Manchester. So if Manchester can beat the clan here on Sunday, folks, I really hope there's chocolate hitting the ice because gosh, it just makes my heart want to explode. You know, <laughs> fun is fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I had Chase Ruddy on and I'm like, so, were you on did you see all the chocolate hit the ice and he says no i got kicked out eight seconds in i'm like what and he said he he was trying to fight you eight seconds into the match what'd you do i think it was from um previous game we played them i hit their player in the head on accident and got banned two games <laughs> you hit a guy in the head with what like your shoulder yeah you kind of I can't remember really exactly how it happened. He was just sort of like cutting round somebody and into the net, and then I was back checking and 
and his head's yeah. down probably, and then contact make it's a fast game right and sometimes yeah. guys put themselves no, in vulnerable was, positions. Was, i don't was, know the play so i'm just spitballing it was straight to his head but i didn't mean to do it at all it was right and those things can happen the, yeah. you see someone cutting to the net sort of and you just sort of chuck your body so, there and here's a question did you get suspended for it yeah two games yeah so you got suspended two games and then he is still gonna fight you over it jeepers yeah. I think two big game bans enough, right? You wouldn't have to fight a guy that size, maybe. Yeah, it was a tough one. It was it was a nothing game for us. It was a Challenge Cup game and we was already through and they wanted their um retaliation, I guess. And right. Yeah. Um, I heard there's a few fights that night. So then did you fight that Critzlow later? Because he was yeah, this he... guy that had just been in the shed. <laughs> Yeah, something else happened with Dowdy and another guy, and then I came into thinking. Sounds yeah, fun. after that all sounds really after, fun. I missed that after, shit. <laughs> after that all diffused, somehow I'm horizontal in the air on my back, and I think that Critchlow come and tripped me or pushed the back of my knee, and then uh, mucking it up. And yeah, <laughs> my, yeah. How'd that fight go? It was non really because. No, as just we both mucking grabbed it up. on, was back down on the ice again. And uh, as we're on the ice, it was funny because he was real mad, <laughs> uh, like going nuts at me. Yeah. And then we're on the ice and he goes like real calm. He's like, oh, I stood on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, it was funny how we just sort of like flipped from being really being angry to being okay. Daiko, yeah, to like, <laughs> Oh, I just slipped on the stick, but yeah, he, he stood on a stick and then we both fell down. That's what he said. Anyway. That's because I think like he's a sh- he's a shed guy. He's out there competing and doing anything for his team, but like he knows yeah. what's actually going on. And I bet you, I think that's what's hilarious about this whole thing is that like years later we can all talk about <laughs> how angry we were at each other all the time. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we, I, I remember mucking it up with you a few times around the nets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is good fun though, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> so um, the next year that I was only briefly uh, playing and then I my knee went around, I think it was October, November, um, you would switch to the Manchester Storm. So you have played in the shelter where it's going to rain chocolate next time they win, eh? Yeah, yeah, I do hear that. So why did yeah. you leave Belfast that year? You guys oh, were don't... good. You guys had won the league. And then we have good playoff battle that year i remember that you guys beat us to go to the final thing or whatever uh but like why did you switch from belfast to manchester because it looks like you had found a home there kind of yeah no i had i I loved my time in belfast um just wanted to try something different i was gonna originally was gonna go to um france play that thought i'd give it a try there and um you know nice place to play and stuff and then I got a text from Sheffield um, after, right after the season had finished and it was kind of I could be, live at home and stuff wife could um, work etc and stuff like that and then kind of went back on the France one it was still early yeah you know I felt bad but I was like oh I'm gonna I didn't think this uh, would come up and it's a chance to play closer to home, etc. Yeah. So agreed to sign for Sheffield. Then the coach got sacked. Uh, they won the league and then the coach got sacked. So oh, so Gerard like, like Adams was the one. A, a, yeah, a different coach comes in and they got their own. Which I knew, thoughts. I knew really well that like Paul Thompson come in, but I don't know what happened. He he just said, "Oh, I don't know if." the agreement's still going to be in place or something. And uh, I don't come down and meet me, but you know, when you can kind of tell. It, you want that, to be wanted too, right? As soon as he yeah, starts saying he, shit like that to you, you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just the vibe I was getting. I was like, if he wanted me, it had said, yeah, you know, everything's yeah. fine. Yeah. And just from that initial conversation, I was like, nah, yeah, I'm old enough to understand when someone don't want, you know, it's not yeah. going to go well or they're going to offer you less money or whatever. So then so you yeah, go to Manchester, but that's not Finner yet, right? He's still in no, Glasgow. No, I, I, I originally signed, after after that, my head just fell completely off. That's two teams I 
technically agreed with in the space of a month. And so I was like, right, I'm going to play for Hull. Because I already had my heart set on that. I was going to be playing at home. At home. From home, you know, I when, guess. So how far is yeah, Hull yeah, from up. Sheffield? Yeah, I'm doing like 45 minutes. Oh, that's doable, yeah. Yeah, so it's not too bad. But no, it's nice just to, you know, live at home. So yeah, I'd sign for Hull. And then they went, um, whatever you call it. Tits, tits up. up. Tits, tits up. Tits up. In the summer, the stingrays there a, then, yeah, which was an absolute catastrophe. So that's three teams in the summer I'd signed for. And so then Manchester, your hometown is Hull. Can we discuss yeah. the, their benches at that arena? It's yeah, like a pig not, pen. Like they, it's like yeah. a pig pen. It's yeah, a square it's not, with the door, but, yeah. one door right in the middle of the square. So if you get yeah. stuck behind the door, the coach is like, well, these guys are already over here. Why don't you guys go? Yeah. It's bizarre, man. And then it's know, so some, high, a little short fat fella can't even jump the boards, right? And uh, It's like some places when they invented stuff like that, they're probably like had 12 players on the team, didn't you know, like back in the 80s I'm and 90s. I'm pretty sure it really wasn't have... hockey guys building that bench. Yeah. <laughs> Just think it out loud. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. No. I, but I like that barn. I did well there. I remember them in the yeah. league. So they no, went tits like up right before that that season. Then, eh? So then yeah. you've had Didn't now three. Just, so now you've had pretty listen. much three contracts done yeah. in one off season. Didn't even get told. Just listen. Heard it on the news or read it on the internet or something. Just like uh, the whole stingrays have gone into liquidation. Like, huh, it would have been nice to get a text or a phone call, but <laughs> kind of is what it is, and you gotta find out one way or another. But at the time I was a little pissed off to say the least, but yeah, as time goes on, you kinda learn, don't you? Just oh, to kind of let it go, move on. And, yeah. You know, so then you had the still end up heads. in Manchester though. Yeah, yeah, the Manchester took holes play. You know, so. some guys can't even get professional hockey jobs. You got four in one off season. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a mad summer that that was mad. that w- that would be a mental pretzel eh? <laughs> yeah that was stress isn't good for a guy you know no 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 it's not um so anyways that was the same season then that i am the pregame speaker and we have to win our last two games of the regular season to have a chance to win the league and so you would have been on the team when i came on the fan bus <laughs> hung out with the fans and we were there really early. So they opened up the bar in the arena and I hid from all the players that were like warming up and doing everything. And I was with the fans, had my Viking hat on. And then, <laughs> then I hid in the bathroom naked, dressed as a Viking covered in dirt from Deese. And then uh, the glass broke and warm up. And I had to sit on the shitter for like an hour. <laughs> yeah. In and Manchester. That, uh, uh, yeah. In that, sh- in that <laughs> disgusting away locker room bathroom, you know, there's two oh. rooms. So they, yeah. these locks the one and says it's out of order. It's broken. They've locked it. You all got to use that one. And it was me sitting in there naked on the shitter. And then oh. I came out as the Viking and got in Richie's face, you know, called him a quiet psycho. And then like broke the ax at his feet and like yelled and shouted. And then, you know what? They went out and won. <laughs> oh, I like to be in a fly on the wall for that. Yeah. I don't think there's video evidence of that one. I hope. No, you don't want that stuff that you're like, there's no. there's no cameras around here. I, I, that was actually one of the days I realized it was time to start growing up that the real world was coming. And when Deese's grubby mitts were on me, rubbing dirt on my naked body, I'm like, enough's <laughs> enough. This has gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Anyways, growing up in Hull or what's, where's Kingston? That's right by Hall then? It's Kingston upon Hull is the official name. It makes it sound really uh, nice, doesn't it, and proper. Yeah. You, I but, still find this interesting. Every time people come to the shed and I hear all the town names over in Germany and the UK is, we have all the same towns here. As people just came over and started naming the towns the same thing, right? We have a yeah, Hull, yeah. we have a Kingston, we have all Yeah, this. <laughs> yeah lo- loads near me, um, Whitby, Scarborough. Exactly, it's Lo- nuts. Loads, loads in, and they're all just around the corner from me. Yeah, it's bizarre. And when you start seeing it, and like in Cardins in Scotland, and then when you start the shed, and people tell you about it, like yeah. guy wrote to me and said, "All that's in the Concarden Scotland is like a bridge." I didn't know any yeah. of this, so it's neat though. Um, anyways, so you grow up playing in that hall arena, then on the terrible benches. 
Yeah, yeah. As a kid, could you see over the bench to see the ice, to see what was going on? Yeah, just, I think you edited the letters. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so then, um, guy you did somewhat grow up with, he's in the neighborhood, though, Stevie Lee, confirmed shed guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. We went to the same school. I'm a few years older than him, but yeah, went to the same school. Okay, he. I guess he's done now, eh? He's not playing this year, but he's a confirmed yeah. shed guy. He told me at the testimonial. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a good lad, Stevie. Yeah, I thought he was one of the best Brit D-man I saw. Yeah, over there, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Was he really always on good. those he's GB just... teams too then? Yeah, yeah, he's been a staple in it for years. Uh, yeah, he... just kind of run into a few injuries. injuries and stuff, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, and then getting out of the game, you got to get all set up, right? And then once he gets set up, we'll hop in the shed, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he seemed like a great dude. It was so fun at that testimonial meeting all you guys that I used to muck it up with, you know, it's yeah. funny when it's the off season and you can be friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Um, and so you had a brother too, that he was in Belfast that year too, in 2014, 15. So I mucked it up with him too. eh? Yeah. Yeah. We won the year we played together. We won the league. So that was, that was nice to do with your brother. That would be. It's nice just to play on a team with, um, with your brother uh, to win the league. That is year. it I nap probably... time? Is it nap time right now for you? Are you no, you're yawning look a bit. Half asleep. Well, no, I felt like you were almost no, trying to fight I get, I, get, um, I get tight in my jaw. Yeah, I think I like clench my teeth. Oh. I go like that. Ah, there you go. Okay. I thought maybe you were almost me. yawning because, you know, some no, of you no, guys no, need no. naps. You're growing out of that. Oh, so. No. Um, anyways, uh, I, I forgot to ask where and what are you doing now? Play for the Sheffield Steelers. This is the first time I've put my teeth in since probably the last time I was on the podcast. (laughs) Do do you just have like the, do you just have like the mouth guard one where that just pops in and out? Yeah. Yeah. That one. Oh yeah. There you go. Look at those gyms, folks. Uh, I don't, that's always a good party trick, right? Where the guys spit those out into someone's drink or something. You, You ever do that? I I used to when I when I first got them I used to think oh well if I'm gonna have to wear these and I can at least use them to your advantage but I'd stop doing it because I did it on a stag do with my friends and one of my mates got that pissed off with me doing it all the time and we just <laughs> ran the pool he got it he just instantly got them out of his drink because I must have been doing it all the time being annoying as usual being annoying and yeah it, <clears throat> took didn't it too far skip a beat just launched him. it yeah. Gone. Straight in the straight in the swimming pool, <laughs> and you try and find these in the swimming pool, like yeah. no chance at the bottom of the pool. No swimming goggles, drunk. I was in there ages trying to find them. <laughs> I was like, I can't, I can't be going the rest of this trip with no teeth. Well, if yeah. I'm going with no teeth, my wife's gonna kill me. <laughs> They're probably not cheap, eh? For those, those things no. look nice. Yeah, yeah. My wife works at a dentist, so she sorts me out. Um, Same so, about the rest of them, though. So you are <laughs> the best ones I've got are the fake ones. <laughs> um. So how long ago did you lose them? How'd you lose them? Uh. Oh, I would have been twenty, nineteen twenty. Um. Rod Saric took a slap shot and. Oh God! In your face. I think, do you know like the goalie's paddle bit of his stick? He just yeah. got, like went like that, and it, and I was stood off to the side of the goal and just. Boom. So it's the I stick wish. that hit you? No, no, it was the puck square mm. there. Uh, I wish it was an inch high and just completely obliterated my nose. Because well, and that's bones. what. So that's exactly what happened to me. But I was doing stick yeah. on puck on the D man that's trying to ice it on a penalty kill. So I go stick on puck on the forecheck, and it ramps up my stick and hits me right in the nose. And I was just oh. thinking how lucky I am to still have all my teeth through all the bullshit we did. Um, but that hit me in the nose and my nose was like smelling my ear and oh. the, the whole ice was covered in blood. It was disgusting, oh. but I, I would much that rather that than my nose, teeth. No, man, you... the nose was fine. I just went yeah. into the room. The doctor cracked it, which it didn't hurt that much. It just made a weird sound, Yeah. but then you're fine. You just put the stuff in your nose and carry on Yeah. the teeth, man. And... I just went to the dentist. That shit sucks. Yeah, you, it's a lot of trips there as well, in it, and it just oh. kind of just becomes a bit. Yeah, I'm and very it, fortunate it was, I, to break my nose by the sound it, of all it, this. Yeah, it was bad as well because 
the season, it must have been early on in the season, and the season before, I got high sticked, and it like pushed my front tooth back. I don't think I had great teeth anyway, like straight ones, and it pushed it back, and it made them like really bad. And I was I was eighteen, and I went to this dentist, re- real nice guy. He, uh, he it was Christmas Eve. He opened up the clinic for me, and then um, sorted them out. And I was I was there just like practically crying like please make my teeth look nice i'm 18 like you can't be leaving me like this just make them look straight like what do i have to do he's like well you're gonna need a brace really i'm like i can't have a brace at 18 i'll get bullied like i'm going out drinking and stuff to bars and stuff i can't be having a brace so, so what he's, did he like, do? he's like oh like, well i could put veneers on them but it's going to be a bit of a waste putting veneers on them because the sport you play, you're all absolute animals. You're just going to end up getting them knocked out or whatever. And I was like, no, no, I'll look after them. I'll wear a gum, mouth guard, gum shield or whatever. And uh, put give me four veneers for free. They, look, they looked real. They looked good. They weren't, you know, like too fake. They still looked pretty natural. I was so happy with them, actually. Like, people compliment like, oh, you've got nice teeth. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> veneers. And then, yeah, I go back next season like a month into the season tail between my legs with my the, well all of them just obliterated oh, god obliterated oh, that would hurt yeah <laughs> yeah um so where, where what do you do now though you do have a son you said you got to pick up from school today yeah we're in nursery yeah pick him up how old bit. so you got one kid yeah that i know of yeah <laughs> how old is he <laughs> uh he's four uh, in a few weeks nice I yeah remember those days um yeah they grew up fast man it's crazy yeah how many yeah. you have two yeah two yeah girls. a boy and a girl nine boy and seven though yeah boys nine gal seven but um yeah the, it happens fast man um anyways yeah, I'd like a gal. what's that i'd like a, to have a gal yeah uh, just always fun. growing up around boys all the time it's you know like just mucking it up wrestling all boys, and shit. playing yeah. hockey's all boys and yeah just be nice to have a, um have I actually out. and uh, you know maybe I'm biased but I actually think that my daughter might be the coolest girl I've ever met I think she yeah. is hilarious um <laughs> she is something else she is something <laughs> yeah she's a weapon Ben, ben, ben O'Connor made a good point as well they, they look after your girls when you when you get old as well don't they like men boys like once they kind of get 20 25 fair like they don't really visit the parents or speak to them that much like kind of <laughs> but girls do always go like visit the mums and dads and you know stuff like that and well i think everybody think should be, right <laughs> yeah and i think if i'd be older you'd be just stuck in with your wife and your kids don't live there anymore you'd be like oh can you come around and see me <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's already like happens though right like when your kids start getting older like they have all their own buddies and they like get home from school and just want to go play with their friends. And you're like, well, geez, you used to want to play with me. <laughs> you know? You're going out, you're going knocking on the bedroom door and be like, can I come and hang out with you for an hour? Seriously. Like, can I play video yeah. games too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't even know how to play them, but you're like, I'll let him. <laughs> just bashing all the buttons. That's it. Yeah. Like they're my best buddies. That's what I, who I do everything with, you know, but anywho. Um, so your brother, did you play in Australia yeah. with them too then? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't stay too long because my head fell off. But he looked. He, well, what, I looked it there. What? Your just, your head fell off. Is that what you said? Yeah, it didn't actually come off. But <laughs> what does that um, mean? What's that say mean? Like you got concussed? No, I just was just in a bad place mentally, mm. and I just didn't want to be there. Yeah, I did, but I I just I can't put my finger on it. I was just like, all of a sudden, I was like, I need to go on. And it yeah. was nothing to do with Australia. Like I can't. I still to this day regret it. And I can't. I knew at the time I'd regret it. Like yeah, kind of like just abandoned the team and stuff. And there was just something inside me that was like, you need to just go on. Yeah. Um, and I booked a flight and flew on the next day. Okay. Just well, shot and still to this day can't put my finger on exactly what it was. Nothing to do with Australia. I loved it. The team treat as the team treat you real good like real nice bunch of guys like hilarious oh yeah, yeah i bet you they'd be just, great dudes yeah it, it was after my second year in america and i'd bounced around a lot of teams there and up and down east coast league ahl uh 
went straight to Great Britain, did that tournament, then went literally straight to Australia. And well, that's exhausting, man. That's a long year, man. Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah. After a month in, my head was just my head was just all over the place. I was real snappy in in the in the games we was playing, which one like you know when you're not finding yourself and just being a bit of a recluse. I wasn't coming out of my bedroom and couldn't oh, get yeah. used to the time difference. But that was my own fault because. I kind of want getting up in the morning to do, you know, do stuff to get used to it. If you, you gotta, stay on, you gotta force it, right? The you gotta force change. it, yeah. And, yeah. and because I was just like such in a rut with my head and stuff, uh, I'd just sleep. I'd, I'd wake up and it, the sun had gone down, and I'd fall asleep, and the sun was coming back up, and it just you get all well, just that. messed just up all, then. Acc- all accumulated yeah i was just in like a real dark place did you get out of the apartment enough to eat kangaroo and uh, no i don't Good. know if i ever left Good. the apartment to play well, the, the other uh, guys in australia they were all eating kangaroo the sick twisted weirdos you know my brother my he went hunting and hunted kangaroos is that right so, uh, yeah i don't know like with they... what a gun or a bow and arrow what is he shooting them with I think he just wrestled it and snapped its head. Shut up. I think he did that one. You ever shut up. Your brother wrestled a kangaroo. Shut up. You ever seen the videos of the kangaroos like this? What if he, what if, yeah, what if the kangaroo would have kicked him? There's no way yeah. your brother wrestled a kangaroo to death, is there? Yeah, he does jujitsu. <laughs> no, he didn't. I don't know what they did. I think they uh, shot him. <laughs> that was awesome. But he says he felt, he, he says he felt real bad because one of them, um, had a baby in its pouch. I thought that was a myth that that they keep them the kids in the little oh the, the pouch of the hoodie. Yeah, so they. I don't yeah, think it's yeah. a myth, right? That's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought it was a myth. I don't know why I thought it was a myth, but um, that would feel. They killed, bad. They killed I, the mum, so they yeah. had to kill the Joey as well. After it, he said it was. It said it was heartbreaking. <laughs> that would be jeepers. Yeah, um, it's like that story they're doing there. Um, I don't know if this is a myth, but I think they do it in like the military or the SAS. They have to like survive in a jungle for a week um, and then they have to look after a rabbit and they obviously become friends and bonds with it the pet rabbit for the week and then at the end of the week they say you've got to kill the rabbit and eat it Shut up. i don't know if that's an urban myth either but that's a mad that's a mad one in it just to see if they do it or what yeah because you know like they're in the military i think they need to know they've got that that switch that they can that you know, yeah Okay, that's uh, I wouldn't, disturbing. I, be, I'd be like, I'd I don't be like, even like I, I, military. I'm keeping the rabbit, and I'll have that pet rabbit for life. Right, and I'm the same, yeah. man. It's like, man, sometimes just like I, I, couple squirrels have ran out in front of my truck the last couple of weeks. Yeah, the kids have been in the vehicle with me, it? and like I, I run over a squirrel, and I like, you hear it, and you're like, ah, oh, like, I don't I, like it. I think I'd rather go through the windscreen myself than kill a squirrel. Oh, it sucks when that stuff happens. If I had my kid in the car, then the squirrel's getting absolute squished to death. But if it's what? just me, I think I'd sacrifice myself for the squirrel. <laughs> well, um, yeah, no, it, sometimes you, you, there's nothing you can do. They just come running right out of the forest and it happened recently twice. Um, kind of weird. Um, so anyways, better keep going. So you played for the Kingston Crunch. So that is the same arena then. That yeah, I think that's a, that would be under 16s team. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Stevie Lee was around those days, I think. But anyways, we talked yeah. about him. So you break into pro though with your hometown team, so that's cool. Just yeah. worked your way right up. Yeah, this young, young proper naive just stops going to school really at like 14, 15. My brother's practicing with the with the men's team at the time. And then just sort of like edged my way in like that. He he started to do well with those. And then, yeah, just kind of like sort of lost interest in school. And then I think they, I think they must have had injuries or something or they coach took a liking to my brother and kind of had, he's got a younger brother, not much younger because they're quite close age yeah. gap and said, oh, bring you, brother on to practice we'll take a look at him and i think it just evolved from there and it was like the bnl then it went to the epihl and then they went right up to the eihl right you did that climb right with them yeah that bnl i that it was a perfect league um when when i look back it kind of how things kind of like panned out it was a 
kind of a good evolution. Progression. Progression, yeah. I'm, I'm terrible with my words. My no, I, evolution's a good word, too. I thought that was really well played. You, that, you did that for me. I was going to say progression, I think. My vocal and has got about 20 words in it, and that is it. I, Too many in the head. I, I hear you. <laughs> I just keep saying muck. <laughs> yeah. In different forms. but so yeah, yeah, that B&L that League was an a import league at the time. So kind of... 50% imports, 50% Brits. So it was, it was, it was perfect. Uh, plenty of ice time and stuff. Uh, it was good. But and then, then uh, there was a league above that yet too then? Yeah, that would do. This still was the, the elite league then. Yeah. yeah. So you guys had a lot of Ukrainians on your team. It looked like, like a lot. Yeah, we, we loved the Ukrainian in Hull at the time. That's Looking interesting, right? Like you look at all the, all the other UK rosters and you don't really see, any Western <laughs> European or any many of them, right? That's a lot of Canadians, a lot of North American fellas. But like your imports were Ukrainians for years. Yeah, I was I the coach I, Ukrainian. No, no, he was Canadian. Really? Um, yeah, one of our better players who who lived lived in Hull called Slava Kulikov. Um, he's Ukrainian. He's pretty much British now. He's been here that long. But uh, he's from Ukraine, and I don't know if he like helps with you know bringing in players, saying get this guy, whatever. But I'm guessing they must have been on the cheaper side. But there was some real players. good players. Oh yeah, real good players. Like, oh yeah, yeah. But they, they they must have been cheap. They all you know low maintenance. They don't like uh, demanding this that or the other. Like give them. Well, a they car. have a totally different upbringing in hockey too, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I yeah. talk. You talked to Max Beerbrier about what it was like in Kazakhstan, and man, yeah. like it's a different, different way of growing up in being, hockey. Being to being to those countries, and it's no disrespect to them, but I think you know they probably come here, and um, the UK is a little bit nicer kind of country to live in or lifestyle or whatever, and and I think it probably you know feels nice to them, and oh yeah, you know, good for them. We met some good. Some funny guys as well. They're a different culture, aren't they? Like, there's some funny people. Oh, hilarious! Some, some of, yeah. Some of them you couldn't. Some of them couldn't speak a lick of English. Like, not at all. Not at all. But you just there, like, on the bench and speaking Russian. It'd be like, well, like, like, yeah, yeah. Like, you just know the magic. Yeah. Like, and they get right into it. They are passionate when it gets yeah, to hockey. I played with there. a fella in Germany that was Kazakh German. And had no English, right? He could speak some German, but mainly he was like speaking Russian. And man, that guy was a hoot to have around. He got a yeah. couple of drinks in him too. And then he'd do the Russian knives thing where he'd do the knife around his fingers and like he could do it fast. And then he'd go, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, holy shit. We're it was still when people use two piece sticks and uh, wooden blades. They'd be in there every day practice, like shaving oh. bits of the blades, crazy calves, like mad stuff. And then we had this older guy, still wore plastic skates, one of the nicest guys I've ever met, and I've never even actually had a conversation with him because he didn't speak English, but just super nice. Started sharpening our team skates because they used to do it at the pro shop. So sometimes it was closed. We didn't have like a full-time kit guy at the time. So he'd sharpen the skates. This I'm not even joking. And you know the... They're in like a hole, like they put it in like a jig holder thing and it kind of does it in a set thing. Yeah, to do sure that... skate. Yeah, like you, yeah, put, well, you I set don't know, it the in thing the... you call it. Yeah, um... and then you slide it across. It's like a yeah. jig or something in it, like the yeah. holder. The, the hold it in place so it goes the right way. Yeah. Yeah, right. He didn't use a holder and he also turned the skate sharpener vertical. So the, the, the wheel went horizontal, the blade's vertical. He sharpened the skate freehand like that. Mate, have you seen how many sparks come off the thing? The, yeah. sparks was going, the sparks was going in his forehead. So he could like, because he's like looking exactly where the blade, you know, you've got to get it accurate, haven't you? There's no like, yeah. you know what it's like when your edges are So off, he's right like, in there just taking the sparks right off the head. Off the head, face right in there like, and... <laughs> unbelievable how good he sharpened him it, it's still to this day i'm like i can't believe that went on i'm such a nice guy for doing it because he'd stay for hours and sharpen everyone's skates out of his own time that he didn't need to do it 
Bless and him. He'd, he'd be just taking sparks off the forehead for hours. Sparks <laughs> off the forehead. You just come in the next day and you just have a big black soot mark on his forehead. <laughs> Fair degree bends. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's good stuff. <laughs> um, the funny things you see through your hockey career, especially back in the day, right? When things yeah. weren't as professional I was, as they are now. Com- I, I think hockey's kind of got bored with how professional everything is. I kind of like the little unprofessionalism. Yeah, I, I do too. I was saying it today, like I was kind of glad I bought um saw the area like my first few years before they even like the rules changed, you know, like the clutch and grab where yeah, some of the stuff you could get away with, like <laughs> um, picking people on a face off and hooking and stuff. That was, yeah. I, I, I said it to that Sam Jones today. Like the, the way you got taught to play a one, you one on one is you'd pitchfork your stick in between, in between the guys their legs, legs, and then yeah, shove his chest in, can open him, and send him and get him off and balance, and then like, use your hand to yeah, like yeah, slam him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that'd be classed as like textbook defense one-on-one and um, yeah, you know what I don't that. you know what I don't miss about being in hockey seasons and I don't know if it's still the same way because of there's not as much hooking and shit is my arms would have bruises and scrapes and like from the hooks on, on your inside yeah. your elbow and everything yeah, that, and it rip your I, skin I get, open um, oh I roll my sleeves up but I used to get friction bends from the stick tape, just little friction bends all over my wrists. And I was like, I, I didn't need those in years. And I was like, yeah, because you're not allowed to hook people anymore. Like right. you used the to. sticks aren't up in that area anymore. Like yeah, I, yeah. I remember my arms would just be ruined through a hockey yeah, season. Yeah. 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 Anywho, um, making Team GB for the first time, but actually under 18 would be the first time. And then a couple shed guys on that team, Barry McKenzie. Nick yeah, Watt, right, from 4,000 <laughs> and counting. And uh, Richie was with you, like, the whole time, eh? Yeah. The perfect yeah, we, we had some real, We had some real good teams back then. It was, it was unfortunate because the year above us, they won um, – well, Richie's a year older age group. Okay. But um, the year above him, they won a really strong team. And uh, they'd always get relegated down to a group. So we was always in like a bit of an easy group and we'd always usually win it. Isn't but it something how, to... yeah, like under 17, the team that wins it then moves up to under 18 and then the team that comes up maybe isn't even good, right? And Yeah. So yeah, if so you're playing kinda... after a team that's not that good, they're always going to get you relegated to it. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Pretty much. And that I felt sorry for Rich when Richie was at the top age here because – we had we had a real good team, and I'd I'd have liked to see that team in the higher group, which we yeah. never got the chance because we we did it we did it one year as we got through to the tw- as we went up the age groups to the twenties, and then it was my last year twenties, and we was in the group below the the top top, one. top group, and yeah, we, we were supposed to be we got promoted, so technically you're the lowest seed, supposed to get relegation, and I don't know what happened, but we won the games good we went into the last game and we had to tie with Austria and we would have gone to well juniors really and we was winning like we was the winning the game one. we was winning the game three nil after ten minutes I think mm-hmm. and it was just like surreal like oh man we good we got a good chance to do this. Yeah. And then I went dangling up the middle of the ice. Uh I still don't know what happened. I did I tell the story in the last one? I don't know. No. I don't know, but yeah, I, I went dangling. I pulled the move. I pulled, I went round one guy. And as you kind of, kind of let my guard down, I thought, well, I beat one, but it literally as soon as I beat one, boom, someone absolutely smashed me. Like, yeah. Yeah. smashed me. Like, cause you're not, when you're making it, a move around one guy and then another guy comes out of nowhere, all, all that's when you can it. really get it. Yeah. They must have just had two people come in at me at once and I got around the first one, but then the second one, yeah, annihilated me. Like, shoulder was Gone. dangling down, like mm. completely dislocated. Oh. When, yeah. And I was, I was one of the older defensemen. I'm not saying I was like the better one, but like, yeah. I was a senior defenseman, put us down to like 5D or whatever. And then, and By then, the time I got undressed and that, I came out and it was free free in the third period. I think with five minutes to go, and then Austria had this good guy who was playing in the OHL at the time just come down and 
roof to one shelf. It was like heartbreaking. Oh, heartbreaking. God. Yeah. And you're not even out there to, you know, it sucks being injured and watching like, well, you, it's hard when the guys win. Cause you want to be a part of it, but it's even worse yeah. when they lose. And you're like, all you want to no, do is go out I, there. And I help. do. I honestly felt like I could have like, I was playing for the senior team at the t- men GB senior team and just being one of the older players, I felt like I could have still like helped us, you know, out there, but Hey, that's hindsight in it. Maybe I'm at it. What are you going to do? You, when you get injured, you can't play, right? And that shit no, happens. I know. <clears throat> but it, it, I look back and think, oh, what, you know, the what ifs and stuff, because you see kind of what it's done for the game in this country, the senior team playing in the top group. Oh, yeah. And I kind of thought, oh, if we could have done that at under 20s level back then, it could, you know, it potentially could have happened earlier. The game. The yeah. publicity and stuff that comes with it and the fun. But you guys probably of... don't even realize, and I don't think anybody realizes yet, what getting to that top group and being on TSN, not that that's a big deal in UK, but that you guys are known over here now. And like that there's kids have people to look up to that they've seen go and do it and win back-to-back goals and go to the top group. Like, I don't even think the UK hockey scene really sees the benefits of that for another, I would say five to ten years. All of a sudden, yeah, no, I agree. It's like when Josh Batch says he started playing hockey because of the Mighty Ducks. Well, you don't see that for five, ten years. What you guys yeah. are doing now will have inspired a bunch of kids probably to pick up a hockey stick um, that maybe wouldn't have, right? Hopefully, and I mean, John and that say a few times. It's hopefully you know what, what we've kind of playing up there and can help grow the game or. Yeah. Get ki- kids get involved or even more funding you know not even go to us hopefully like the 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 game yeah. in the uk can get more funding and that go directly to grassroots of on our way you know from our achievements or whatever you know well that's the thing hockey's pump, expensive right if you can, can kind of people some, start yeah 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 it is a bloody expensive sport and that's that's a tough thing for a lot of families in it getting going so yeah, sure. hopefully it does can help propel it forward and get some money in the game and get it in the grassroots and the kids who kind of need it to kind of help them yeah. in the future. Um, well, we're kind of bounced around today, but that's kind of what I like to do anyways is with this Team GB, though, you've been on you've been on the me- the men's team, I guess, the senior team since like 2005-06 season. That's a long time. So you would have been to a lot of countries and seen a lot of shit over that time, eh? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. A lot of bad ones. Some good ones, some bad ones, but Well, when like you're in those you're different seeing... pools, right? You're not you're not playing in the big arenas maybe that are, you know. Yeah. It I think that's that's what I've always tried to do, you know, starting in Hull and like saying it they did the best they could with the budget and the money they had, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't the most professional compared to other teams. But I loved it, and at the time when you start, and that's all you know. But you know, like we didn't have a kit man or this, that, or the other, and it makes you appreciate, doesn't it, when you kind of do go to a technically like bigger clubs and stuff. But all, I, what I'm saying is, I try not to be like high maintenance, you know, like yes. demanding. Oh, I want, I have to have it like this or that or whatever. The <laughs> yeah. other is kind of. You kind of just kind of remember where you've come from and then same and with GB, the punches. Kinda, you have what you have. Do the best with yeah, what you got, right? <laughs> kind of use use them experience of kind of the places we've been and sounds cheesy, but even just the way of life is in some of those countries, they're all happy. And then you kind of think, God, how, how we have way nicer lifestyles and eat nicer food and way of living. And it makes you, it does make you appreciate coming back home and when you, there's times you want to, moan and complain you're like no nah, life's good like what, what we got to moan about I, I think life's all about perception you can complain because about what doing I've, shit or you can have fun doing shit because <laughs> what i've noticed getting older you know when you get older and like grumpier in a way yeah is also that's when you need a people shit. <laughs> who just moan all the time they just like moaning about complaining about stuff and it's it's draining especially if you're in the dressing room we're like you with them people a lot it's like that negative energy and stuff. It's like what you got to moan about. You're playing you're playing ice hockey for a living. Like, it's it's the same in the real world. It's the same in hockey. Yeah. Negativity is exhausting. And yeah, really when you're is. like that and you're not having fun with what you're doing, like 
just yeah. get out, man. You know, like, and, and don't get me wrong, you need to get that balance, don't you? Like, it's healthy to kind of have that rant and that moan, but you've got to do it in the right environment to like the right people that you kind of in your little yeah one on one circle. You go for a coffee and you just vent and you just blow off some steam because you need yeah. that too. You can't just have it all boiled up because you'll end no. up going bloody. Oh, absolutely. You'll end up bloody going cuckoo. I think every but, hockey guy goes out with a teammate, right? And especially if things aren't going well in the season and you got to have a, you, you might have a coffee, you might have a beer, yeah, but you sit yeah, there yeah. and you just talk about some yeah. of the shit that ain't working, some of the shit that needs to change. And then, yeah. you know, you go back to the rink and either you try and yeah. fix some of that stuff or at least you vented. <laughs> and like you say, whether it's, whether it's in ice hockey or it's work or home life, it's people, it's healthy to do it. It's just not healthy when you're doing it in front of All a big group and you're bringing, everyone down, you're bringing everyone else down with you. Well, since I've started this, I'm a much happier person. I, I'm happy kind of all the time because I have something to look forward to. Yeah. Um, or I just had a lot of fun. Like after this, my day is going to be way better because I'm going to be in a great mood that we did this and I had a lot of fun. And um, when you are in a great mood and then you have someone negative around you, you realize it more and you're like, wow, oh, you should cheer up. <laughs> how many times I've woke up and been like, oh, I feel good today. Today's a good day. And then, and then someone else starts can complaining be around, around for a minute yeah. and you're like, <laughs> and it triggers. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. You're right. Um, your equipment manager, though, with Team GB for most of this time, Taff. He's a shed guy. Is he? Yeah, he keeps on. To that one. He's one of my favorite humans, Taff. I uh, everybody he's raves looked, of his work. He's too, looked eh? after me over the years. That guy, just a yeah. lot of things, not just hockey. Just even kind of, I'd like to call him a close friend. He's just always been a, just always there, like you say, shoulder to cry on or whatever. Like he's just just a solid dude. Top. Top, top man, yeah. And, you know, one of them people who, you know, he's got your back, like he he has got your back through thick and thin. He'll do anything for you, no matter what it is. Well, and that's how teams win championships. And, man, when that guy's the equipment manager on teams, they seem to win gold medals and they seem to win league titles. <laughs> oh, it's mad. It's when, you, when you've got someone as good as him, just talking job-wise, it, it is job. It is. It does actually make a difference. It's just... It, it does. Um, Kel- Kelman Kelman says it when um, at the start of seasons when he gets a new team he says you know like I want whatever you need right now to kind of make you feel comfortable settled in you know yeah because it's tough in it for yourself I've done it you go to different countries and you're figuring things out or your house or apartment might have something missing and you don't you well, kind of might be one of them you don't want to go ask for it. When it's also you know, your your brain and what you're thinking about isn't yeah what it should be thinking about. If you have everything you need and you're comfortable and happy, yeah. you're thinking about the game that night and how you're going to be awesome exactly, instead of yeah, the no. microwave in the kitchen isn't working or yeah. the hot water's not working. Priority get, you know, you want to make sure your wife and your family's settled, comfortable, you know. And, and then the you month, can play hockey you and that, run them up. Then you, then you just concentrate on hockey and, and Todd's really good at doing that with his teams. And he's like, I, I just want you to every day come in and give me everything you've got hockey and only focus on playing yeah. hockey, not having that out of Well, and good equipment like, oh, managers my... do that, right? Because you show up at and, the and rink and your sorry, laundry's yeah, not done sorry, sorry. and you're, yeah, like your sticks aren't there or you're missing this or you're missing that. All yeah. of a sudden you're at the rink thinking about that shit instead of getting ready for practice, you know? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I went off on a tangent talking about Todd, but yeah, that that's no, Taft. Okay, like, he's good he at running stuff. teams. He's already at it. He, he does, yeah. Taft does stuff before you. He, he's kind of like psychic. He does it before you even know it needs doing, and then you'd be like, "Oh, I've just remembered." Um, is it all right if you do this? He's like, oh, "I've already done it," and you're like, "Oh man, you're mental, I know. quick." And, and I think he kind of mentored Dees, right? I think he's kind of mentored Deese because yeah, yeah, Deese yeah. was the same way. Deese would go around and check like every screw on the helmets. And it's like, you don't yeah. have to do that. The screw's not going to come out this he, year. <laughs> he does it. I didn't I didn't even know it till he told me, but he goes and works for the IIHF and does like that, like clinics or mentors. And he's they teaching go for, like, a equipment. Of yeah. Showing the ropes on teaching. Yeah. And it's brilliant because to learn from someone like him, it's, it's not an easy job, but uh, Part of the job is you kind of need the experience of what to do, what to do. Same with a lot of things in life, but if Absolutely. you can learn from him, you you pick up so much in a week if you shadowed that guy. Oof. Yeah, 
No, it's it's been neat chatting with equipment managers or kit guys, as you'd call them in the shed. Um, yeah. They see a whole different side of the game, but they're, they are very intelligent hockey guys and they know what players need and they know what teams need to succeed. But then there's also equipment managers that suck. Uh, their teams usually suck. But yeah, carrying on is after five years in your hometown and hall, you do move to the Belfast Giants and then Taft would have been the equipment guy there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I already knew him from the GB and stuff, so that was that was nice. Like I'd already knew him because. So how do you end up going dumb. to Belfast? Um, Hull was always usually like a lower budget team. Yeah. Um, bottom you end to get of the paid. Sort of <laughs> no, no, <laughs> they they kind of pushed me a little bit out the door, kind of in a in a good way. Like time to time to spread of, your wings. Yeah, you know, I was playing for the. Like say Great Britain, and then I think the coach just had my best interests at heart. Like he brought me in from a kid, and yeah, he won't he won't the money. All all offered me good money. He just literally got to a point where I was like, "You need to go play for a top team because yeah. you, you know when when you're on a lower team and you're younger, you it's good you're getting the ice time and stuff in it. You can't just go. It's tough when people just go jump straight to a top team. Like you're yeah. not going to get the minutes you probably should be getting at that age. And that's right. where I'm I'm blessed through Val to kind of what did the word we use? Huh? What did the what was the the evolution was it? The word oh, we use. Oh progression. Yeah, the progression, the evolution, being on that lower team, getting but, loads yeah. of ice time, you know, win, lose, a draw, you know. When at, the, at those ages you gotta be playing lots, right? Yeah. Whether you make a mistake, he, you know, it was Rich Strachan, the coach, he's chucking you right back out there and he was like one of the best coaches I ever knew that. That's the only way you're gonna learn is by your mistake, but make sure you learn from it and don't do it again. Yeah. So yeah, he he kinda he helped actually get me to Belfast. Um good for it's him. Funny, the, the it sounds like a shed brilliant. guy. Strax. Yeah. Strax. Yeah, oh yeah, get him on, he'd be brilliant. Well, he he's would been be helping brilliant. a kid out like that and the way he treats you and he's looking for your best interest and in what you're saying about him. Yeah. Sounds like a shed guy. <laughs> yeah. It was good because it it was kind of like because there's Going coaches the out there, though. There's coaches out there that are they're totally in it for their success. It's in the East Coast. They don't want certain guys called up because they're awesome in the East Coast, and they don't want to see them go from them, and they don't want to lose them, right? And yeah. it's the same in the UK, you're saying, but or like it could be. If that guy wants you to stay in Hull, he's going to convince you and get you to stay there, but that he wants your oh, best yeah. interest. You know, it's people want, these... having the best interests and. In, people's futures is the way hockey should he could have, be. He could have easily done that, yeah. But no, uh, yeah, looking back, it was real good of him. And yeah, kind of, uh, oh, a lot to him, to be honest. The time and effort that he put in and the chance and opportunity to give me back. Uh, and is he the back, guy bringing in the Ukrainians? Yeah, 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 he yeah. loved the Ukrainians. Yeah, That's yeah. cool. I'm interested how yeah. he came up with that idea. Yeah. No, you should you should get him on. He's a, he's a character. He's, <laughs> he was good. He cracked you up all the time. Uh, he's, 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 he's old school do you know what I mean he's, he's got that old school about him uh, he, I'd love to chat he, with him perfect first coach because he had that like cool to be kind like he was staying with you but like in a good way like you knew he always had your best interest but he'd be hard like yeah. not shouting at you just, he'd just tell you if you and, and he, he wants the best out of you and expects yeah, it but when, most of the mine was a lot of off ice stuff where he was staying on me because I had a lot of growing up to do and I think he must have thought who oh, is this absolute rogue from all I was just a complete idiot like young I was still like idiot at the time and yeah just kind of taught me how to be professional in a way like yeah a lot of sit down talking to is like you can't do that you can't, can't eat do that, that. Like, you can't do that yeah I had a few eat, of those meetings too <laughs> eating a pop noodle on the bus and you'd be like you told me you'd be better off eating a cardboard box than the pot noodle, which is probably true in it. But you, pot, know, you don't pot have any noodle, do pot oh, noodle. Oh, it's like um, it's just dried like the noodles, thing, and then you put you it just in. Pour the, you water put water in it, and then you yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I know. But it's you. already in the it's already in the plastic pot. Yeah. So it's a perfect Those, pre-game meal when you're yeah. eighteen. Well, I used to eat frozen pizzas for the pre-game meal, right? I just throw them in the <laughs> oven, you know. I got yeah. carried away when I started having two of them instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, so your first season on a big, a, a big club, right? 
uh, with Belfast, you had 25 points. So you got there and you earned ice time and you're, that's not even power play time. You're saying 25 points is quite a bit. Yeah. I, I think we only had five defensemen that season. So you, you it did to used to be different. eh? like now you guys yeah. probably have what, six or seven. Yeah. It was just normal. then. I think, I think we yeah. only actually sent then five D men and probably 10 forwards. Right. And you just give her. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's crazy. Yeah, well, I used to like playing with three lines. I thought four lines was boring. Yeah. Not at the testimonial, mean. though. I could have used six lines. <laughs> I know what you mean, because sometimes when you get injuries and you go 5D, it's for, for a game or two, it's nice because you're getting, you know, you're on a little bit more. You're kind of feeling the game a bit more. So I could imagine it being a bit like that from three lines to four lines as a forward. Well, forward, yeah, like it's just different, right? Especially like if you're running a muck, when you're on a three-line rotation, you're getting out there more, you get more touches, you get more feels. And like you get four lines and say you don't penalty kill and you waited through the four lines and then you're about to go and then there's a penalty and then you wait to two more minutes and you're like, shit, I've been sitting here for like seven minutes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anywho, that has nothing to do with anything. That season, though, your two goalies were both Welsh. Yeah. Nathan Craze. I, I never heard that name, really, but he's a Welsh fellow that was the Belfast Giants goalie, eh? Yeah, he was a good goalie, actually. Then you also had Colin Shields, Shed Guy, 70 points that year. And then Paul Sample, he was at the testimonial, right? Yeah, yeah. Jeez, a lot of Shed Guys on that team. But yeah, it was a good team. That that was that was one of the best years of my life. That was... is Todd the boss there then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was good. That was a fun, fun season. Great bunch of guys. So I was proper wet behind the ears first time leaving home. Just didn't have a clue about life. Belfast is and a nice I... city too, eh? Yeah, yeah. Just fun. I'll... I think all them guys on that team must have just thought, what is going on with this lad? And thankfully, it was all real nice to me and actually <laughs> kind of was like big brothers in a way. Cause there's Steered like, you in that. the right direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> were you guys good? Yeah, it was. Yeah, we were. We was the, I thought it was the best team, but we just we just got injury troubles, and I think at one point our full first line was injured, and there was a good first line backline as well. Okay. Um, well, anyways, after that season, you now spread your wings to Belfast, but now you're heading to North America. How does that happen? Yeah, I was that was that was a whirlwind as well. Um, went to World Championships at the end of the season and. Um, I did. I did decent tournament. I didn't think like oh, I'm just played real good or whatever. Yeah. Just you know, normal. And then before the last game, the coach Paul Thompson comes up to me after the pregame skate. The same guy that didn't want you in Sheffield. Or, yeah, 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 same, yeah, that same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. And it was like, oh, um, I'm speaking to Chicago. And, blah, 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 um, you're going to go, there's a good chance you're going to go to their rookie prospects camp thing. Um, I know Stan Bowman. I didn't even know Stan Bowman was. And he's like, blah, blah, um, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a good chance you're going to go to it. I honestly, had not, I've never even heard of rookie camps or prospect camps or whatever. And I'm, at the time, I was kind of thinking, well, probably won't happen. He's just saying it and whatever. <laughs> and then, I was like, oh, man, he must think I'm a good player if he's kind of putting my name How old are you? That. How old are you? 21. Here? Yeah. 21. Usually I have a good sleep in the afternoon on a game day, like a good yeah. two, three hour nap. I couldn't uh, sleep all day. I was nope. wide awake because my mm-hmm. head was just like, whoa, what's going on? Like, I do know. Yeah. So I go to, so I go into the game and I'm thinking, the coach thinks I'm a real good player. Like, I need to prove I'm a real good player. And I just went out and had the best game I've ever played. Played real good, like because I nice. just felt not pressure. I just felt like I need to. So you, I owe it to him because he you, thinks I'm you, good. You did the opposite of what I did. So when I'm at Western Michigan, I I I'm not even sure which year it was. There's a couple of years where I was doing pretty well, but I literally had NHL teams coming to watch me, and they were meeting with me in the hotel room before the game, like after pregame meal or whatever. I went into like hotel rooms and met with like. NHL teams and 
then I would go try and have my nap and I pissed it down my leg so bad. Oh, I, no. and you would have thought I was drunk out there. I was, oh. I, I could see the guys like the two t- couple times it happened. I could see the scout in the crowd. And when I'm sitting on the bench, I was looking at him instead of like what was even going on in the game. And I was so mind effed that I literally, oh, no. it was the worst I played every time that shit would happen. Oh no. Yeah. I'd rather them not. I would rather not know they're there. You know that I wasn't yeah. up enough though to deal with yeah, that yeah. shit. Right. I think I'd be like that now, but back then I think I was just so naive and wet behind the ears. Like I didn't have a clue what was going on in Well, life. the mental side of hockey is like, I think the it is such a big deal that if you can trick people into believing in themselves and thinking yeah, they can yeah. do it, no matter what the circumstances. And that's they when you play way better. Like the, the best coaches you played for, the coaches you liked, the way you played ho- the best hockey is with the coaches who believed in you, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can and that, that's what it was with um Paul. So yeah, we played that game and then he kept in contact for the summer. I was actually gonna go work in Magaluf in the summer. Magaluf? Um, we you'd compare it to like Cancun. I was just gonna go work in a bar in there for the <laughs> summer, which <laughs> kind of a good thing that I didn't. Yeah, and probably. He's, he's straight away is like you're not going in there and doing that because he got wind that I was gonna do it. Uh, so yeah, he kept in touch, and then can't remember how long after it was, but then got the call say, yeah, you definitely go in, which was weird to be. So you like, went to the rookie camp without a contract then? Yeah, just as like a walk, and I guess you'd call it. So you weird. want to hear something funny for me though, is um, I was guaranteed an AHL deal to go there at the end of my senior year of school with Columbus. They said, we want first crack signing him July 1st. We just want to see him first. And then I went there. They didn't like my body type and how I played and they didn't want me, but they guaranteed me the AHL deal. They signed me to the AHL deal, deal they had guaranteed me and didn't want me so bad. I wasn't even invited to the rookie camp. I should, I, went straight to the main camp for 48 hours and they sent me back. <laughs> so well, I literally, I, I signed with a team that literally didn't want me. They didn't even invite a rookie in their organization to the rookie camp. <laughs> Was you just too fat? I guess. And I, I didn't play well and they didn't want to sign me, but they guaranteed it to me. So they had to, <laughs> <laughs> but nice Hey, your East coast team went to the finals next year. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they didn't want me, but uh, I didn't even get to go to the rookie camp, so I never got to do one of those. So, anywho, yeah. you got to go though. Yeah. So yeah, it was weird. Like you're normally training in the summer, right? you like in the gym and stuff, but it's more where it's getting stronger and whatnot. You're not doing as much. I wasn't doing as much cardio because I always thought I was like cardio decent, and I was always quite skinny. So I was always trying to like bulk up, put weight on, and stuff, doing a lot of weight. So it was, I think. June or July, I want July maybe, I can't remember. But I had to stay on the ice because I was like, I'm not just doing like running all the time. So I stayed in I stayed in Belfast for the summer because I was like, that's probably my best place. If I train. go back to Hull, I'm gonna be with my mates drinking and not yep. training the way I should be, whatever. So stayed in Belfast and I lived with Colin Shields, like come and move in with me. And he does person he's a trainer, yeah, uh, and conditioning guy, got his gym and that. He trained me every day and um yeah, owe a lot to him, got me in good shape. And you were ready to rock. Weird though skating, because I was skating in Belfast, and no offense to the people there, but like the only ice we could get on was like I don't even know what the standard was, but not good. Then they're nice enough to let us go on, but I, I need to be flying, I need to be going full pace. You know what I mean? Like I can't yeah. be like dropping down to like you know, yeah. just sit like they're like their level. So like, yeah, I need to be doing my own game, like getting my fitness up, keeping it up, whatever, flying around. So that, that, it was weird doing them skates, but yeah, yeah, summer skates can suck when it's like that. Yeah, didn't have a clue what was going on at that rookie camp. Just yeah, it's weird. It's, isn't it wild when you go to something like that and you realize how many players are out there? You know, <laughs> like yeah, it's crazy real, how many good hockey players are. Real small ring, but. I think looking back, the the best thing I actually thought, don't get me wrong, there's some like real good players there, real talented players, but like none of them had played against men. Every every kid there had played against junior, whatever kids yeah. their age or young or like youngers, yes. And like I'd been playing men for playing against men for probably four five years, you know, and yeah. I, and 
I, I could feel that on the ice. Not strength, just yeah. I just felt a little bit smarter in some areas, but they had good skill and technical ability that I yeah. don't. Yeah. You know, so it's it weird. Like I felt like I was not far off, but not. So then there. what did you earn then? Because you do side with them. So what did you get? An AHL deal? Yeah, on the last day. I, I thought I was just going for the experience, honestly. No one told me you're gonna there's chances of getting contracts or whatever. I just thought you're just going to show them what you can do. But just, just that's really cool, man. Team. That a Brit went over there and earned a contract. So they signed you the last day to an AHL deal then with Rockford Ice yeah, Hawks. The, yeah, even that was weird. It was the Blackhawks GM at the time, that's Stan Bowman. It was him who actually like sat down and I'm talking to me and offering me it. And I'm like, I used to think like, why, why are you speaking to me? I thought it'd just yeah. be some peasant like yeah, secretary I, guy yeah. doing it or to just email you it but for him to actually like sit down and speak to you and do it i'm like you don't need to waste your time with me mate just get someone else to do it type <laughs> and of thing. i had the same mentality too <laughs> when they're sending me down from columbus and i went in and yeah. talked to doug mcclain i was like why are you talking to me <laughs> yeah i know the, the first thing i said to him was like oh i don't know if i can come i've, I've got a criminal record they're not going to give me a visa and he was like don't worry we'll sort that out i was like oh good <laughs> Um, you know, looking back, there's some good players on it. Um, a guy I played with last year, Justin Hodgman. They they kind of like split you up into teams, like squad teams, and you stay on that. You have a little practice and play a get like a lot of games. And I was on the same squad team as him, and he just sort of like wrapped his arm around me. Knew I didn't really know what was going on, and Help. showed me where to go and stuff. And it was it was me, him, and then Jake Muslin was just our little clique who kind of ate together, went on the bus together, and sat next to each other in the dressing room and it was he he was a walk on as well I think that was it and they didn't they didn't sign him and then he went to LA's camp after that. Really? It was funny it was it, funny yeah. looking back like oh as if they passed up on him to the career he's had but it's they, cr- it's crazy what some people see in hockey and some people don't yeah. it's- like it's, one, there'll be hundreds people. of players like that, won't they? That will walk through systems and go. Uh, up like uh, da- the year before I got to Landshut, Germany, they brought in David DeHarnay for a tryout and said he wasn't good enough. And then he went back to the coast and won MVP and was in the NHL within like two years. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, it's yeah. Fly all the time, isn't they? It's wild when you, yeah, get talking around in the shed. But okay, where are we? We're in Rockford. You got some guys. Uh, there's some small world stuff on here, though. Matt Keith was on your team, shed guy. Yeah, loved yeah. him. He's a beauty. Corey Crawford was the goalie. Yeah, real good. Very really good. good goalie. He's done pretty well. <laughs> yeah, he he, he he must have been frustrated to be there because he was easily good enough to be in the NHL at the time. It was just sort of still sort of um. The contracts and all that, but somebody would have contracts that are still up yeah, there. Yeah, it's, it's different for goalies, isn't it? They sort of don't peak a little bit till they're older, and I don't think they wanted to like rush him. They knew he was going to be good, so they're like, kind of like, you know, we're just going to wait our time, just a few more years' experience down there. But it must be frustrating for him. But well, oh, he's great the goalie. There's a lot of players too that are like that, right? Not just yeah. goalies that you see them yeah, play yeah. in the AHL and you're like, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Never played with a goalie as good as him. Now he literally broke the puck out. Like if they dumped it in, he's making passes like proper passes. passes. He was and literally that a can change. Man, goalies being able to play the puck changes everything. When they can yeah, just do that for the like, defenseman um, not getting hit. For the forwards getting the pass on their tape and yeah. you're right out of the zone, it changes everything. He'd pass it to the, he'd pass it up the middle to the centerman, like no problem, like tape to tape, just boom, just do straight it straight out on the rush. Yeah, um, your leading scorer was Mark Cullen. Small world is my East Coast line mate was Jojo Cullen, his brother. So yeah, he had a couple of brothers, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, and then the other one that played in the NHL forever, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's some characters on that team. Um, you played 52 games in the A, though, eh? That's pretty darn good. So what's your role? 5 6 D man? Penalty killing? Mucking it up? You fighting? No, not really. Um, at, the, at the start, I was sort of like in and out. I'd play one game, sit the next, play one game, sit the next. Yeah. Um, which never been used to before. Healthy scratch. It was That was a bit of a different one to kind of mentally take 
Um, I, I was the same way when I got to the I had never been a healthy scratch. I'd never sat out again. Yeah. And then it, yeah, it's it can mess with you, right? You get bagged yeah. and the bag skated though, and then you just watch like, them play. You know, there's better players ahead of you. It wasn't, it wasn't that. It was just sort of like kind of feeling like you're not part of the team a little bit in a way or you're getting pushed out. So that was... And they had confidence too, right? It's like yeah. when you feel like you're good, you play good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, and then it got to just after Christmas, I think it was, yeah. And then I got sent down for a week and then think like a little bit of the politics side of it. It was um, one from like not playing good enough. I'd, I'd have known straight away if I was playing bad, like, oh, no, I'm going to go down here because every day you kind of fit, you are dangling on that string, you know, yeah. even in practice, like, oh, if I have a bad practice, it could be me go down or whatever. But they had a couple of NHL contracted defensemen my age that, was sort of on in and out the lineup too. And I, I think they give them the last roll of the dice because, you know what I mean? I'm on a AHL East Coast League deal competing with a guy who's on a NHL, NHL deal, deal. I know. For a, for a spot in the AHL, like they're going to, and they've got to send someone down. Yeah. They're sending down. The Usually the guys on East Coast AHL deals, they're actually just signing them to play in the East Coast, right? So that yeah. you played 52 games in the A that year, man. That's good. Yeah. So they give these two guys like a last crack at before they send them down sort of thing, give yeah. them a little run in the team. And the GM was like, right, you're going to go down for a week because you're not going to play. They're going to be playing. You're going to just go there, get yeah. ice time, get games. And you've got a return flight. You're definitely coming back. So that was nice to kind of like know that, like it that you're going, going down there knowing you're going back. Yeah. 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 So came back and then, however many games after that. I don't know how many it was, but I didn't ever scratch again. And the coach really seemed to really like me. I was playing loads. And that's got to um, feel great as a Brit to be a full-time HLer and play a regular in the AHL as yeah. a Brit. That's cool, man. How many guys have done that? I don't know. Um, Kek is doing, you know, he's got this, and yeah. um, done awesome getting his NHL deal and stuff. Um, he's down in Tucson, I think, yeah. at the minute. So... Hopefully he plays more games than I do. And hopefully, hopefully he gets his knee better because, man, it's cold out today. And like my knee hurts, man. Hurting your knee sucks at that age. Yeah. You know? hopefully, he's, hopefully he's all healthy and it's not bothering him. Well, at least he... he's with an NHL organization to like rehab it and help him get back yeah. to where he was. Because yeah. like for me, I, I basically rehabbed myself, right? Like I, in Germany, they helped me out. But then when I go home for the summer, I literally just went to my hometown rehab place and yeah. like it was not like what you'd get from an nhl team i don't think <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> um but so anywho yeah, that, back, that back end of that season it was nice just knowing i had that confidence like you said the coach believing in you like i knew i wasn't getting scratched anymore like i just knew and then I you could just play yeah yeah and it just yeah played really well really well you even played some playoff games i saw which play like ahl playoff games that's an accomplishment because man it's i saw what it was like in the ahl man like you're in the playoffs those that's high-end hockey but yeah, anywho we got th- swept for not for, for nothing that's why i only uh, played four games well the next season though i'm interested what kind of contract do you sign because you are, it seems, with the same organization with Toledo, and maybe not, though. Who are you with? Because you played with Toledo, 31 games played, which is the coast. You played with Gwinnett, 13 games. You played Lake Erie in the A, 11 games. And Chicago. That's yeah. North American pro hockey, isn't it? Four teams that oh, yeah. season. <laughs> yeah. No, the So being there a year, you kind of get that experience of kind of like how it what it works. How it works. Uh, yeah, just like even like a little bit of the political side of things, like like I said before, if if there's one job and there's two people competing for it, some and the, and it's a they you know there's not much in it ability wise. They, they're gonna pay the person who's got the that you know what I mean the contract. Oh, I, the, I, yeah, or yeah, the, they had whatever the bigger resume yeah. when they got to pro they the guys that got drafted by the organization the scouts that put their neck out yeah. there and picked guys it's it's hard as the free agents rolling into town and taking those spots yeah. right so the first some guys can do it the, but it's hard i was on a two-way ahl east coast league and then the second year obviously won't get an nhl deal but um i was like i want to try and get a one-way one-way a deal because you played 52 yeah. games yeah not just the money at that age i didn't even 
cared money no one's making a fortune anyway it was like money meant nothing to me like yeah absolutely it was just i was just happy playing hockey but i knew if you've got the one way that's just that little bit of chance that if it's me that you're gonna I'm stick a two-way guy yeah. to might keep the one guy on the one way but yeah so i signed with that um chicago wolves um, and they, I think they had me penciled in to be the seventh D man, which I was happy with. You know, I've got a roster spot on the well, team. And kind of, uh, just like, for folks that wouldn't know the AHL, though, the Chicago Wolves were always known as like the AHL team with money, right? Like they would yeah. have, they'd have a high end AHL team, and they'd be paying some vets. Which, in hindsight, no one would tell me that. I wish I would have known that at the time because. There was loaded, um, right? There's and then you can't, players. yeah. And if you don't know that, you don't know that. And then but, they yeah. also kind of then beat it to their own drum a little bit. They was Atlanta Thrashers farm team, but they just kind of just did their own thing in a way. Like they were trying to have Rockford. the best AHL team they could. They didn't. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't growing them for the NHL. Yeah, yeah. Rockford it was like pretty much dictated by Chicago, like. You know, yeah. they're saying what to do, what not to do, you know, or a lot of involvement. And I think that Chicago Wolves ain't really getting told by Atlanta Thrashers kind of like what to do. That yeah. was the vibe I got. And it, but anyway, it was, it's it's weird how things turn out because Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup the season before. And then, so all guys want better deals or whatever. Atlanta Thrashers signed Dustin Bufflin and he was a forward in Chicago. Yeah. And then Atlanta, but he's originally was a D-man and then Atlanta, Fran, uh, Atlanta Thrashers wanted him as a D-man. But when Chicago Wolves signed me, they didn't pencil in, in him as a D-man. getting bumped down. Yeah. So the pecking order. So the dominoes dropped down. and then you get sent yeah. down to Toledo. So we had a we had a defenseman on NHL one way contract. He's obviously not happy to be there. No. Uh, he wants to get traded, but it was that he was a fighter. He remember Boris Volobik? He'd have been in Coventry. yeah, yeah, in Coventry. Yeah, it yeah. was him, and it was a bit at the end of the era where NHL teams weren't really carrying the you know the, the fighters as much. Yeah, yeah he was because he, he was a big boy, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a big player. So he <laughs> yeah. he wanted out of there. They kept me around for a bit, thinking he might get traded, but I don't think anyone wanted him. Yeah, I'm guessing because he, he yeah. stayed there. Yeah, so they bumped me down to Toledo, um, which one their farm, which one she got the Wolves' farm team. It was Gwinnett, so I thought it was weird that I was going to Toledo anyway. So I go yeah. there for a month. Then after a month, they was like, "Oh, you can't stay for." insurance reasons which still to this time like what just thought it was bizarre like oh yeah you've got to go to Gwinnett so I'm like all right so then you go switch teams for, uh, just, okay so do you feel like Gwinnett. you're part of a team now <laughs> no I did it no. Toledo though so I go to so I go to Gwinnett and then day one I was like oh no got I got scratched the first game which I was playing well in Toledo as well and I thought I did think it's a bit weird, like you, you're on an AHL deal, like tell me if I'm wrong, those people usually are like playing every game in the coast. Yeah. But it was like the coach was sending a message as well, like... I'm doing my mean, thing, yeah. I'm doing my thing, but fair play to him. Like, I think he was just loyal to his boys that he'd signed right. as well. Like I've, got, I've already got my guys, I didn't have you penciled in to be here. They told me I'd be getting X amount of... And the no- North American and... pro game is just a meat market, man. Yeah. Like it's like if you show up then and then you start playing a ton and like those guys that were there and probably do it just fine are like, well, what's yes. this about? Where's this, this guy? coach? You just got this vibe like from day one, like you just didn't want me there. <laughs> Fair play if you didn't, whatever. That's, it sucks when you get that vibe. Call right? me Harry Potter because I was British. She called me Harry all the time, which like I was like, yeah, that, right? That's not funny. Just no. yeah, just scratched all the time and yeah, just become. I just I was getting to the point where just playing a game, healthy scratch. I'm like, played the previous season in the AHL. No, I'm good enough to play in that league. Whatever. Yeah. But not in a cocky way that I'm like, oh, I'm too good to be here. It was just like, I'm not playing here to be 
yeah, healthy scratch in the East Coast League or whatever. Or I just want to play. Do you know what I mean? You want to play Even hockey? If, yeah, yeah. If I'm in the East Coast League, I want to play. Yeah, and so I, I took, I got the agent to speak to the Wolves and cancel my contract, and I just signed an East Coast League contract. Took the massive pay cut. Like I said, one about the money. I just wanted to play, yeah. and went just went back and signed for Toledo. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so, and then which allowed me to get called up by an AHL well, team. You and, got, and then you like, played 11 games in Lake Erie. So now I'm starting to yeah. figure this out, how that year went and your mind's gone through a lot, like as a player, you know, you'd think yeah. you're an established AHL guy and you're going to be there. And then you get bounced around like that. And then that's when you go to Australia after that. Yeah, and that's when my head just was just like, right. just had too much. Just really, honestly, it was a look. There's a lot to take in at the time. We were at proper mess my head up. It's only yeah. took me a while to kind of still just, you know, like that emotional roller coaster up, yeah. down, up, down. Yeah, oh yeah. Just a lot of that. And my first month or two in the coast in Dayton was very trying for me. When yeah. I had I had lost all the weight that they were unhappy about. I showed up to Columbus's training camp. Uh, finished eighth in the training camp, like for fitness testing, and that's a real thing. I actually did. And um, then they sent me down because they had already decided they hated me and didn't want me and had me just play with the draft picks. And then you get to the AHL, you run a muck in the preseason. Coach tells you it has nothing to do with how you're playing, but you're going to the coast. And then you go down there and like nobody talks to you, nobody says anything, and you're just down there and you're like, this is not how I thought this was going. And then your mind just starts playing tricks with you. And you're just, you're so angry, so pissed off and unhappy that you, it's hard to play well. You yeah. know? It- I think uh, I think back then, and I could be wrong, I think people still look at you as like, oh, it's a British player, like they don't belong. Right. They shouldn't be playing hockey. Like I think people still had a little bit of that stigma in a way. Stigma. Not everyone. Good word. Not, you said you yeah, only had 20 you. words. You got lots of words in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but not everyone. It was like almost 50-50 in a way. Like people would go one way or the other. People would like really respect you. Like, oh, man, you've done... Yeah. You've done well for yourself to kind of be playing hockey in Britain to to where you've got to, and or people would go the other way and be like, yeah, you yeah, you don't play soccer, you like go play football, soccer, whatever. Definitely, I could see that. And I, I, and I'd say I wish I knew a little bit more on just how things worked there. You know, the dynamic of the training camps, the healthy scratches, the just the process of all that. Being mentally just, strong through all that is a thing. Yeah. And like those, yeah, it, it, there's guys it, that grind it out, man. Like you played uh, with Derek Nesbitt through this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I played over a thousand games <clears throat> in North American yeah. minor pro. Like that's mucking it up. Yeah. Yeah. I played with him in, in Rockford as well. And in, yeah. um, and in, uh, oh no, he won in Gwinnett. He's finished in Gwinnett, didn't he? In Atlanta. That's, they just retired his jersey there. Yeah, they yeah, called yeah. him Atlanta now, but yeah, yeah, his jersey just retired. Another shed guy, but we better keep going, you know? We got to keep going. After that season, you decide to head back to the UK um, with Co- the Coventry Blaze. Why is that? Just like I said, just head fell off and just thought I needed to kind of. I don't even know. Just but why back. Coventry? Because Paul Thompson was the coach there, and this is the same yeah. guy that ended up not wanting you in Sheffield, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got okay. me to America. Got me to Coventry, and then didn't, didn't... want me to Sheffield yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Just a bit of like I don't know, just like home comforts in a way. Just I don't. Yeah. I don't know what the like. To well, say, when you like know the in. coach and you got something comfortable there, right? And especially yeah. when you know he believes in you and got you to North, helped get you to North America, and then you deal with all that. You want some comfort. I could see why you there's, go to Coventry. And have, weren't they a, good with him there? Yeah, yeah, there was till that season till I came and put him down the toilet. <laughs> um, no, in in I'm saying doing it doing a day that don't go by that I don't regret not trying to stay in America longer and stuff and oh, is honestly, that right? beat, beat, yeah it beats me up to this day. Oh, Why I would hard. I I would I wish I would have never played the one year in North America. I wish I would have left right just, away. <laughs> you she just left thinking the what ifs of a young age playing good and stuff and just yeah I think I wish wish I stuck out a bit longer but 
we wish I was mentally tough. It's all it was, it was just not mentally tough enough. And well, no, I was the same. I wasn't mentally tough yeah. enough. Like I talk about the Western Michigan there when I know the NHL teams are coming to watch me play. I'm like, why are they coming to watch me play? That's absurd. And you don't like, you got to believe in yourself and you got to be mentally tough, especially when yeah. you get to pro. And then like, it's like, for me, I've always been on the power play. I've always been an offensive yeah. guy. And then I get to the AHL and you put me on the fourth line, no power play. It's like, why did you sign me? <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. What'd you think I was going to do out here? <laughs> yeah. So just mentally just sort of like tapped out in a way and just come back to like your home comforts and well you did well you had 20 points in 36 games but you'd like not to get down about it because then you go to sunder <laughs> yeah right? they, 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 we we struggled that year in coventry and then they run into money troubles as well and then yeah halfway through the season when they get into money troubles he and um, the, tomo the coach was like oh um just gotta let you know and be honest with you sheffield want to sign yeah and I was like, oh, all right, well, what, what do I do? He's like, oh, it's, it's completely up to you. And I was like, well, didn't want to like turn my back and like jump ship on everyone. I was like, no, I'm staying. He's like, oh, no, it's, it's your choice, it's your choice. I just wanted to let you know. So he's kind of like, why don't you go? Because we can't pay you. <laughs> that was the, yeah. But I didn't realize that at the time. Then, then a month later, same conversation. Oh, Sandy used to want to sign you. And, when I when I originally signed for Coventry, he was like, "Oh well, you know, I've got connections in Europe and stuff," which he does, and he's like, oh, "I'll try and get you to Europe. Just kind of come back, sort your head out, and we'll get you a job in Europe." So he's like, "Oh, somebody who's going to sign you," but then it kind of like clicked. I thought, like, who knows? Maybe it was him being nice, trying to help you move or... me on, <laughs> or there no. wasn't money to pull, and I was probably on decent money for them at the time, so it worked. It worked well for both people, and I kind of got the hint and was like, "Yeah, I'll go." <laughs> well, Still you get... gave me the option, but I was like, you know, when you kind of like getting the hint. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you get the hint for sure. Beating him gave me the hint heavy. <laughs> um, but so you go to Sunderuski, you guys go pretty far. Eleven playoff games, and you played with Shed guys. Kim Lukasov was I don't, he was my captain when we won it. He hasn't been yeah. to Shed yet. I think he's scared, but also Daryl Andrews. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys are beauties. And Alfie's the goalie and yeah. Michael Madsen. He w- he was around too. He had retired, but came to help us out a few times in like the Continental Cup and stuff. And he was a beauty too. Yeah. Yeah. And you lived yeah, in Clovervi and peed the bed, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I That's lived there true. too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting spot, isn't it? The beautiful yeah. arena and three roundabouts. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. I loved it. There a short time now. Well, I, like, like, and I, I enjoyed my time too. And I, if they would have offered me a contract that we were, were fully intended on wanting to be there and staying there. And then when I was told I wasn't being offered a contract after winning the championship and finishing second in the league and scoring, I was like, huh, geez, I'm a real bad guy, I guess. But yeah, yeah. then you get a little sour, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little sour, but anywho, um, so you guys got put out what that semifinals then? Yeah, it was one one of them where you can pick the team who you play in the playoffs. And yeah, we that's picked... crazy. Oh, did we pick? Anyway, whoever we picked, you could tell there was there was not happy because we did one of them. Oh, it's crazy. We did we, we did a strategic we... choice with you know if you to pick the, like the lowest seed. Yeah, it would have kind of they probably would have took it on the chin because it's kind of acceptable in it, like with picks. Well, and that's what you should pick. Fair like enough. if you're first, so you we, pick eight, right? Yeah, yeah. But in the next round, I don't think we picked the lowest seed, and I think the other team must have took it as like took it as yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, we're S-mon. ready to rock. Then you want to play yeah, us? That's how hockey some... works too, though, right? But I find it funny when I was in there. Uh, we finished first after the regular season, and we picked the fifth place team to play <laughs> out of the bottom. And that was because their top two imports um, had bet against their own team and no longer played there. So, oh yeah, I remember they, that story. Yeah, Mosyanko and uh, the other yeah. guy, the Russian fella, or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was funny. But yeah, it's an interesting league. You pick who you're going to play. So, anyways, yeah. you finished there. I know you told me that you would have stayed as well, but they didn't have you back. And for the folks that don't know how soon Yuski does it, I'll tell you. They'll only sign about five or six imports. They're actually allowed eight. And um, 
they have you there. You play great. You win the championship. And then it's, they'll bring in guys from Sweden, Finland, or the UK near the deadline to bolster the roster for the playoffs. And then after that, they're going to go right back down to about five imports the next year. There will be about three or four to be asked to kindly leave. <laughs> so is that what to do then? Yep. Uh, in, uh, yeah, that makes yeah. Yeah, they don't want to spend the money all year. They want to play the young Danish guys more. So they play the young Danish guys until about the deadline, and then all of a sudden you'll bring in some Finnish, Swedish fellas, and uh, then the Dan- young Danes don't play as much come playoff time. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, but you bring in a couple of players, it changes your whole roster, right? <laughs> like, and we're back at the job center at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. So, anywho. You go back to Belfast for three more years. Hey, okay. mm. 22 points, five points, 21 points. And the one season year, that's when you guys win the league by quite a bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. We heard, heard about that. Yeah. Winning. Yeah. Fun, really eh? team. yeah. It, it, it's one of the seasons it all clicked. Um, I think one of the main things within get many injuries which always helps yeah and then the coach paul ad um quite a quiet guy kind of left us to it had had his systems but you know nothing crazy, crazy or erratic it just you know simple basic systems we're going to do this and trusted and we, his we never, players to do it yeah and we, we never changed but maybe because we're winning so we didn't need to change but we literally played the same way every game no matter yeah. what, never, Didn't... never, ever changed anything. And... and I find that I kind of like, I think when teams worry too much about the opposition and what they're always doing yeah. instead of themselves. Exactly. That's what I was going to say next. And and that's one thing we never did. We never, because the previous coach, he'd like to scout the other teams and, you know, break them down like they're doing this, they're doing that. Oh, so yeah. we have to do this and counteract it, which yeah. I'm not a coach. So it's like, I don't know what's the best way, um, but, it was like, we're going to do this and we're going to do it really good. And, and other teams kind yeah. of finger to us. And we, we never changed for anybody. And, and I, thing I do, like that. I think when you're so worried about what the other team's doing, you'll be out on the yeah. ice thinking about it instead of yeah. just playing, right? Like you're, yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. oh, that guy's going to go over there. And oh, I remember yeah. on video, that guy's going to go over there. And it's like, well, yeah. maybe they're not actually going to do that this time. <laughs> yeah. We'll just do what we're going to do really good. Yeah. And let and them beat them. About <laughs> us. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know if you've ever done it. We also, it was three lands then, and we we played as like a block of five. Uh, you know, With like normally D. you just yeah. you roll six defensemen in pairs, don't you? Like three and it, pairs does, it doesn't and really matter land. the D or with the forwards or the forwards or yeah. with the D. Lordo is very much like that. And for fun fact for the crowd, Lordo's line happened to have Andrew Hotham and Mark Richardson on with them yeah. almost all the time. <laughs> yeah. Don't know how that worked out, Lordo. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, it, it was a bit, it was different at first because no one had ever done it before. And it was, it was, you had to get used to it because that's how Germany at, did it. At face offs, like you could get pulled off, but you've like, only being out there for 15 seconds but then because the forward also, line you, had already been out there yeah <laughs> yeah but but then you you quickly realize like it swings and roundabouts like you can go back out there quickly as well at a face because your line's ready to go so but i i loved it the the chemistry you get like you talk the about team chem- yeah. yeah you talk about team chemistry but yeah as a d you've got to lay in sort of like 12 forwards games like where they like to receive the pass and you know, each and just guy's... their tendency is where they're going to yeah, go. Yeah, the tendencies, right? you know, yeah. breakouts where, so say like when you're playing with the same line, like you can almost close your eyes no matter what spot you are on the and ice. You know where they're going to the be. Puck, and you'll know where your wing is going to be and you know where your center is going to be. And yeah. yeah, you should be like that anyway with all your lines. But some wingers might like to go a little bit higher up, some oh, yeah. might come a little bit deeper. And same with your centers. Some centers like to swing really low in the middle. Some and there's like also to... guys that want the puck in the neutral zone. Yeah. And there's guys that don't, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like, I always wanted it. I'm like, give it to me earlier. Don't wait until yeah. we're in the offensive zone. Let me have it now. <laughs> and then I remember we used to, when we used to get in the other team's end, we, it would, and 
you you with that five man unit, you know each of his game. It was yeah. like a five. You normally you two D men are just on the blue line, stood there. Your yeah. Three forwards are kind of buzzing around cycling. You, you'd you'd have five man cycles going on. Oh. Everyone would be like changing spots because once you, you get the D men involved in the high cycles, and like you get a guy like Kelvin Elfring or someone out there running around, and you're like, it gets so confusing as a winger, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and people were smart with it. Like they'd go in, but then they'd back out. But just creating that confusion is like that's when you know you're running there. a buck when you get that shit. Yeah, going. yeah, and we used to do that a lot. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was really fun to play. Um, okay, yeah. I got a more serious note. We got to keep going. Okay, the, it's a real world day. We got to keep going. In Sorry, Belfast, I can talk for hours, so I, so so can I? I could do this with you yeah. for three hours. Uh, <laughs> we no struggle. We struggle with all those fighting to get where we're wedding anyway. Is that like no? Um, in Belfast, where do you go after games? Like, where does the team go out? And then, is there a place like Chippy Lane after you're done? No, it's weird. Belfast back then, they, they weren't really um like takeaway places afterwards. There, there, there was a small little area, but it was more like. In the uni- university yeah, sort area. Of student area, which weren't really in the mix of like the, the bar bars area. in the city center where you people you would think you'd think you'd have those stuff. by each other. Universities yeah, and bars usually don't... go together. <laughs> they they probably to be honest, they probably is now, but back then they, they weren't. So yeah, you'd never maybe go to the twenty four hour McDonald's, but no, yeah, they didn't really have a chippy lane. That's tough to hear. Um, yeah, you'd have to you'd have to get in a taxi and go out your way to kind of go get the right. food. Yeah, and that, yeah, that's not as fun. No. Um, then you end up just eating at home or something. That's not as fun either. Yeah. Um, then so you live a... in the city centre, so you, after the, the bars, you just walk home anyway. You're not going to go in a taxi to get a takeaway to come no, back home. Like, no. yeah. If you get in a taxi home, you'd like do a detour to the takeaway, but yeah. Yeah, okay. So then... You do your three years at Belfast. We talked about that. You switch to Manchester. But after that year in Manchester, then the year before was when Thompson's there. So then I'm guessing he's gone now. And yeah. you now sign with Sheffield. You get to finally oh, live no, at Tom- home. No? Thompson Thompson, Thompson was there. <laughs> so he basically had they had signed you. He becomes a coach and kind of hints he doesn't want you. You go to Manchester, play a year, and now he does want you again. Yeah. Holy moly. <laughs> yeah. well, okay. Um, so that's in 2016, 17. And like that, since then you've found a home, right? You get to live at home. Yeah. You're playing for the Steelers. That's pretty cool. eh? Yeah. Yeah. Being happy. Loved it there. Um, I can't believe how quick it's gone to be honest. Um, I know. Yeah. Do you know what's weird? <laughs> this is your seventh year there. <laughs> you've also yeah. been to Hungary and whatever, but like, um, I've been retired since your Manchester year. So I've been retired that long that you've been there. Jeez, that's that's flown by because it didn't even feel like that. Like I'd probably, That means I've been retired guess, for seven freaking hockey seasons, man. Oh, I'd guess three years. But everyone's lost crazy two years of their life for the COVID, and that's messed my time scale up. Oh, yeah, that messed everybody up. <laughs> no kidding. Um, well, how, would, how did you feel when you retired, like, the year after or year two after, was it tough to oh, get it, used to? Yeah, it's, it's one yeah. thing I always worry about. It's always. Um, yeah, no, it's, it, it, it was hard. Um, it was very yeah. hard. I was actually thinking about it. Um, so I don't like to say nice things to guys in the shed, but um, I don't know if you realize this, but your teammates rave about you. Um, you were one of the most requested guys in the shed from your teammates. Um, and um yeah, it's very hard. And from what I hear from your teammates is, yeah, that you're a guy that loves hockey, loves being around the boys, and that come the day you don't get to do that, it may be difficult. Um, yeah. I was thinking about it. It's like when you're a hockey guy, you get to go to practice, which you call work. You hang out with 20 of your best buddies. You shoot the shit. You joke around. You have a hoot. You go out there. You muck it up with each other. You try and get better. And then you go have lunch or something. But like, when you think about it, almost everything you do throughout the day, you got like a teammate with you. You got a buddy with you, everything you're doing, you got guys around with you and then it ends and those guys aren't around anymore. And all of a sudden you're just doing it on your own. But like, for me, I had my kids, but you don't have that shit, man. I can see how guys get uh, right off the rails. 
Yeah, it's 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 scary. Yeah. It, well, it, you know, then you got to f- figure it out. Um, yeah. It took me time. Yeah, it took me uh, working my way up in my company I'm with now. I've been with them. Uh, they haven't got sick of me like the hockey teams. I've been with them now for over six years. And um, now I like manage a team. And it's kind of like I'm a coach, right? So I like, I figure out how we played the last game, which you call like a project, figure out how to improve it the next time. I adjust the roster as needed. Um, I got all-stars. I got a Crosby and McDavid. Like I got a squad and that's how I can do this is, um, and it makes my life better that now I'm in that position than like the third, fourth liner grinding it out because it's like I run a hockey team now is how I look at it. (laughs) I think I'd like to stay involved in some sort, just purely. Right. Just Just to have it in your life. And and that's what I found with this, right? This is just brought everything love it back too much for, for it just to completely stop and just I know you'd have met people like they'd say like when they're done they're done that's it right well, and there's some guys that just straight game. up are done right they're just sick yeah. of it all of it yeah. which is fair enough isn't it it's everyone's choice but I don't I just don't think I'd be able to do that I think I've just loved the game too much and no. being a part of it too much that it just stop right I know and uh, so yeah like. Hopefully you can stay in the game where it's like your job, right? That's yeah. the, that's the dream. I'm, no, I'm, I'm fortunate that I'm, I'm starting to do some work with my father-in-law in the summers. So I'm going to hopefully work for him when I What's that? Playing. It's, um, I don't even know. It's like steel fabrications. Um, yeah. If you guys need any heat treatment, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> superheatfgh.com, folks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel fortunate because that is a big worry in it for people to like what they're going to do after they finish playing. Well, it's so like feel- it's like having a plan and trying to execute it, right? It's like when I was in Cardiff and I knew it was coming to an end, I did the MBA. I wrote every paper on the nuclear power plant here. I had a plan. We bought the house. The, my what I was striving to do. And it was kind of like being a hockey player, right? You need to have a goal and you need to try and execute yeah. it. And like, that's what I never ended up working there, but in the same type of industry. And um, it's weird when you, you got to have goals and you got to have drive. Yeah. Right? You got to be into what you're doing. And I think that's the hardest thing for yeah, hockey guys definitely. is you definitely. love what you're doing. It's like, you've never, it's like you're saying when you yeah. give up a contract to make less because you want to play hockey, I was the same mm. way. I couldn't believe people would pay me money to play hockey. And then once you're happy, you're like, I don't really care about the money. I get to play hockey yeah. for a living. And it's like, this is awesome. And then when you actually have to work for 40 hours a week and you're like, yeah. and you're going to pay me less than when I was a hockey player. And I got to sit here all week. <laughs> It's brutal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so any, you, but, you're right, though. It's finding something you love because yeah. you've done something you love and got your money whole for life. It. Yeah, your whole and life. That's all you've done. One, one thing I always told myself is I'd, I'd never get a job if I didn't enjoy doing it because I've got too many friends who work regular jobs since they're 16 hate years it. old and they hate it. And you're I'm like, hating your job every like, day and going and doing it is brutal. Yeah, and I'm like, I know what I'm like. I, I just be, I just get too mental. It, yeah, mental. It just mess me up, and I'm like, <laughs> eh, you need to find something, and you got to provide for your family, aren't you? Like, I'd take a job if you didn't enjoy it to kind of put food you, on the table. You got to do what I you got to do. Yeah. I mean, I'd I'd try different things out to kind of find something that you you Absolutely. like because I I couldn't show up every day if I hated it because. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we talked about we talked about the negativity, right? Absolutely. And you, when you're doing something, you got to do it right. But it's like the negativity we talked about. It's like if you're that grump that's showing up every day, you are the problem, right? Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. And and sorry, back on that. Another thing is doing it with good people. You enjoy being around as well, because you've been around guys, the camaraderie and stuff, and the banter and all that. Going and working with people, like I said, miserable people. I would say I, I could be cleaning toilets for a living or digging holes or whatever. The most you're with miserable good people. jobs. But if you're doing it with Jonathan Phillips, Robert Dowd, Ben O'Connor, uh, we're having a great day and we'll, we'll get the work done. We'll yeah. work our asses off. 
and, and we're gonna have fun we'll have doing a great it. time while we're doing it yeah and that's, and that's what I try to, exp- yeah, I say the same shit to my son. Mm-hmm. I try to make him do stuff around the house. I'm like, well, you can, you can either have, we can either have fun while we do it, or we can whine about doing it. Like, yeah. why don't we have fun while we do it? You know, it's the yeah. same with anything. It's mm-hmm. hockey should be fun. And there's teams yeah. where you can get on them. The coach makes it unfun. Some odd teammate could make it unfun to be around him. And then it's not fun. And then you, hockey's not fun, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like you just got to get on them guys, and you, then you make fun of them about being little babies, and just keep keep on on. You, well, it's good to be able to chirp people and stuff, but like yeah. I'm very fortunate in the real world. I got a team of all stars that we have a great culture, um, and they do anything for me. Anything I ask of them, they do it, and that's how you can start a shed. But like you talk about John O and Dowdy and the shed guys, right? Is like. I have buddies around here, um, but like the hockey guys that I was around for 15, 20 years, um, when you get to say Western Michigan and from that day on, you're with hockey guys, like all day long, you go to practice together, you go to school together. And then in pro you're doing the same shit. You're hanging out, having lunches, killing days together. And then it's over and like finding the shed and getting to like, Mm-hmm. be with my people be with the guys mm-hmm. i like chatting with even the guys i used to muck it up with that weren't my teammates like we're all the same we we're just wearing different jerseys yeah and, man it's brought back my love of the game it's brought back yeah so much fun for me and then we can like get chocolate thrown on the ice in the uk and it's like god damn this is fun <laughs> yeah yeah no good for you <clears throat> yeah good. so but yeah, if anybody ever wants to start a shed that's having a tough time after hockey, I'll be the first guy in there, you know? That's good. Mm-hmm. So anyways, you're having fun in uh, Sheffield. We should, we have so much more to still talk about. Gosh darn it. Um, you went to Hungary. <laughs> talk about that. <clears throat> yeah, it was the <clears throat> COVID year and I didn't really want to leave home. My son was young at the time <clears throat> and heartbreaking leaving him but yeah that would be and i needed to do it because yeah it was i think my wife kicked me out to be honest because we'd been in all the lockdowns and stuff like that she's like you need to go play hockey and yeah you need to be (laughs) around yeah yeah Yeah. Uh, so yeah i went there and i enjoyed it different experience um team struggled i hear they have good goulash I uh, I didn't eat that. I didn't. I just sort of ate my own stuff, to be honest. Really, you didn't. The team, the you team didn't provided... Wait, you get, They say win in Rome. Like when you're in Hungary, you got to eat the Hungarian food, no? Yeah, I, I didn't. I don't think I like goulash. You didn't even Sounds... eat the kangaroo in Australia either. No. Nah. <laughs> yeah, you like the, what the, you the, like. The, <laughs> yeah, team team was struggling. Awesome guys, I loved all them guys. Real good guys, and then coach gets fired. New guy comes in and then yep. the I got a text fault. saying that the Elite League might start in January. There's like a 90% chance. And the, the, we was on a I think we was on a real bad run. And I knew people was gonna probably get fired. Some yeah. of the imports was gonna get fired. And I thought the Elite League was gonna start in a month anyway. And this was like just before Christmas. So I went and spoke to the GM and was like I just said, oh, I know you're going to probably make changes. Yeah, it's obvious. Um, I'm happy to leave. Kind yeah. of. Uh, and then you get to go the home and got... see your son, right? Like, yeah, it was for... coming up to Christmas. I didn't know if I was going to get to go home for Christmas and the days off and stuff. So I was like, I ain't missing Christmas yeah. with him. No. And um, they, may, they, might have, they might have sacked me anyway. I don't know. I might have been able to get a bit of a payout, but yeah. The the honest thing to do was I couldn't have seen someone get fired when I was already thinking of I'm leaving anyway. Going to, yeah, and yeah. Because there was all too much nice guys, all everybody and yeah, there was definitely gonna make changes. So I was like, I'll I'll do the honest thing and um I'll go. Whether whether they would have got rid of me or not, I don't know. Who who cares? Yeah. At least well, I, one guy you thought I saved someone else a job. One guy you were playing with there that I believe he also played for the Steelers for a bit, but I don't know how he aged, but when 
like we were in our twenties and stuff. And I would saw him skate in the summers and whatnot. And I saw him play in the OHL. I thought he was one of the most talented hockey players I've ever seen in my life. Martin St. Pierre. Yeah. He's real good. Long Obviously stick too, of, eh? He, he talked about that. He cut it, he cut it down. He took um six in, he said all of a sudden one day he just took six inches off it and it's um normal now. But apparently he's well, why the heck would he chapters. do that? I would see him play with the longest <laughs> thing. It would be way over his head. And man, that guy was so good. Yeah, he was. It was tough for him in Sheffield. Um I think they let him go after like a month or two, but he he jammed his foot into the boards and something was going on with his foot. And I think they might have just thought he was like slow. But you know when he's trying to play through it and stuff, and he's just yeah. not. You can tell he's not hundred percent. And when you're not a hundred percent, it's hard to run a muck. Yeah, whatever reasons they made a change, but you know, it was good to reconnect with him in Hungary. And he yeah. proper took me under his wing as an older guy like that. I thought like you don't need to be doing all these little things like getting me tape before training and do like just doing stuff like a younger kind of kid. Had, you'd expect to do but <laughs> just being a dude um what okay. a nice guy though well we pretty much have to shut her down now. i go back to the real world here but um yeah like how are you guys doing this year i haven't even looked good you, yeah. yeah really good yeah got you guys got a good sleep. squad and wins down yeah. testimonial yeah i think uh yeah this year i don't know when exactly this wow. this, this year though once he gets that locked down, I got to have him in the shed and we'll get promoting it, right? Got to sell some yeah. tickets for the guy. <laughs> yeah, do you want me to see if he can get you on the team as well? Well, I don't think I can go to all yeah, of them. I just, you got no more leads. There's just so... There's, no geez, more like your, your whole age group, like your whole core of that GB team, eh, is just running amok with the testimonials these days. Yeah. So this year, Dowdy, Mizey, and Batchy. <laughs> I can't go to all of them, folks. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. 10 years with a team, you know? Like, and all of them have done it. Jeepers. I think yeah. you got three more years in you, too, eh? Hopefully, hopefully they like us last that long and they want me that long, yeah. Well, winning is fun. If you guys keep winning and to keep people around, yeah. right? That's how it works. Yeah. Um, one other thing, though, we didn't even talk about is the Challenge Cup you won. I guess you did win on at my honey hole, eh? You beat Cardiff in Cardiff. Yeah, that was a good game, that. I've had two good games in finals against them. Well, some we've lost, some we've won, but all the time we've played them in finals. It was good. We had a good playoff one as well where they, they changed the rules that year to do continuous overtime. That was that was a cracking game. Yeah. It was one of the unhardest stressful games and played never done that before where you just keep playing really good. that yeah, is good that's really the way well. it should be yeah it's exhausting but like when someone finally scores and you're like wow what a hockey game right yeah i was that ecstatic and i'd never won it before i'd been to a few finals and i was lost so it was just the emotion you know you took all your stuff off someone said my stick ended up in the crowd i think i just like lassoed it just Oh, you can. I had no idea it went in the crowd. When you win, it you can get carried away. Yeah, Yeah. and then by the time I was on the ice, by the time I got to like the celebration, there's Dowdy and Levi Nelson on the ice. But I went to go like run and uh, not run, skate and jump on top of everybody. But then last second, I looked down and realized there's someone on the ground, and I was like, "Oh no, I'm I'm literally going to like stomp on their head with my skate." Oh, so they have to like. So instead of going skate first down on him, I knee dropped him instead. <laughs> well, you, there, there's definitely injuries that happen celebrating. Yeah, it happens yeah. all the time. Guys get yeah. injured. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, but winning is really fun. I really yeah, enjoy it. And, um, but yeah, like I, that's what I love about this is like actually getting sit down and get to know you. Like the group chat was different. It was hectic. Like. After this, like now when I watch how Sheffield does, I'm going to be seeing how you're doing, right? And it's like, I got another buddy in hockey and that's what I love about yeah. this shit. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to come back on. I've got way more stars. We've just talked too much about my career. We'll get into the stories next time because there's loads. <laughs> oh, we'll, there's we'll loads. do it again. This is this has yeah. been a hoot. But I got to go back to the real world, folks. So yeah. this has been another episode of Zero Ales and Hockey Tales with Davian Wally. <laughs>